It's Tuesday, and I just killed six gummy bears. Hello, everybody. Welcome back Woo! to Collider Live. It is a Tuesday. It is a wonderful Tuesday. It is a nice Tuesday. It is a special Tuesday. And joining us on this special, lovely, wonderful Tuesday, Roxy Stryer, sweatshirting it up. I like it. Yeah. What's going on? I got a lot of uh, compliments on my casual attire yesterday. Yeah, me too. I liked it. So I thought, you know, I keep a little, I keep a cash. Yeah, you too. Casual. Switch it up. Cash. But is it really cash if you're making it cash? I don't know if it's casual to call something casual. Right. I think that's a little. Like fancy. if you're aiming for it, yeah. then it's not really casual. Is it? Also, I went through like twelve different shirts today to figure out which one was the most cash. Oh. <laughs> so. Okay. And that's definitely not casual. right. So you're, Thank so it's you. like it's like a Thank shtick. You. Thank that. you, Mark Riley. You're <laughs> deep in thought today. Yeah, no, just it was a busy morning. Yeah, there was a lot, you know, Jesus. news broke. Je Producer extraordinaire. There, yeah, I had to do some producing things. Yeah, well, you did yeah. a good job. Because <laughs> well, here you. we are. We're, here we are. The ship has made it. I, I know when I get a text from Riley before I arrive here at nine thirty in the morning that it's a big morning. <laughs> I mean, some shit's going down. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Everything yeah. came at once. Well, we got a returning dealing. guest here in uh, mm -hmm. David Delsmanchin coming back back in. He's going to talk about his movie All Creatures Here Below. He's going to talk about that. We're going to have him in. Of course, we're going to ask him about Suicide Squad. Of course Yo, we will. And, and, and you got to ask him about Dune. Yes, Dune. that's true. Bonkers. Come on. This movie was Bonkers. wild, child. Yeah. I cannot wait to pick his brain because he's also the writer. I know. So we're going to talk to him about that. Wild child yeah. movie. <laughs> uh, lots of other things. A lot of big news kind of broke because if you, I don't know, if you kind of tune into the Collider video, Cody loves when we do this. When we have a, uh, yeah. we'll have a title ready to go the night before. And then right before, about a half an hour, we asked him to change the thumbnail and the title. He loves it. Yeah. So, I love it this, so this was, much. Yeah, it's this true, was right? very different, though. It was out there. We were, we were like we were ready to go, and yeah. then well, news something broke. things happen. Things happen. I made a things joke. Happen. I made a joke to Riley about something. I, I can't say it on the air. Didn't but... we talk about that? You can't joke anymore. You don't oh, have to do that anymore. Cool. cool. Exactly. All right. I'll just be All right. Okay. Wait, what, what was it? <laughs> I said something, and he goes, "No, no, no. That's not how this is going to work." And I was like, no. <laughs> Oh, okay. So it's that kind of morning. Great, that kind great, of great, morning. Great, What's great, the great. new title of our video? Uh, so they, yes, thank you. They finally, <laughs> nicely done. They finally announced uh, when the next Star Wars movie would drop, and in, as rumored or not rumored, speculated by us and others, it's been 2022. Well, oh, I could have used that information for my tweet. Well, you didn't ask. Uh, you didn't ask a soul. I, do you want to know what I did say right before? I said, What'd can somebody say? even make eye contact with me? You guys were all in your own world. I felt like a leper. And you were just talking. Come about. Here. You were just talking about your your sweatshirt and how you had to pick it out. I was yeah. not. I was talking about Twitter. Let me, let me, well, let me just, I just want to point something. Thank you. Okay. The, these these S creamsicle. Uh, can I have one of those? I've tried that. Get I, the fuck a, out of here. Before, mm. before I kind of insult Roxy a little bit. Um, <laughs> so excited. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, our our friend, friend of the show, Chris West, who now works for a company called... Called Carvana. He came over and gave us like a crap ton of uh, like swag bags yeah, not for the a whole office. Not, not, not a sponsor, but gave gave us a bunch of uh, swag bags. Carvana's yeah. a, kind of a cool sounding company. Should be a sponsor because awesome. this is delicious. Yeah, and then uh, oh, that uh, but came no, from them. No, 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 but oh. he used to work at a company called Lolly and Pops. Oh. There's a location here in Sherman Oaks. It's a it's a candy store. It's amazing. They did a candy bar at my wedding. Uh, he's a big collider fan. Really oh. good dude. And he brought over a paint bucket. Full like a clear paint bucket full of gummy bears. It's the most gummy bears I've ever seen in like one thing. Yeah. And the office yesterday, everybody was like, "Oh, gummy bears, cool!" And then slowly and surely, Crushed like it. zombies attacked. Oh, yeah. Oh, the yeah. Gummy bears. It, it came yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Yes. Do you want to know what? What? I was here yesterday, and it was not. I know. And so when Damn I came here. this morning, and now I've been eating those, I was under the impression that Mark Andreco, and by that I mean Mark Fernandez, oh. did not put his hand in the jar. Mm -hmm. Am I? Oh, okay. I wasn't here. No. Oh, okay, yeah. good. Yeah, I'm not, I can't, can't speak for the rest of the crew. I have no he idea. What I, I, no, I, gave, I gave little twi tweezers yeah, and people spoons. People were using the tongs and the spoons. No, you can't like, stick your claws in there. You have yeah. to not do that. Right. Yeah. You cannot put your hands in the jar. Mm -hmm. Unless it's, it's a big box jar. of DVDs no. that sure. are That's just right. laying around. Right. <laughs> Did you hear what we did yesterday? Uh, apparently not. <laughs> this is actually really funny. This is so funny. So, did you, you know this, Taurus? You, you told, here, here's the thing. Is I heard you guys going over and they go like, hey, who's are these? Yeah. Nobody said anything. Like, Take yeah. Yeah. So, so, here's, so here's what happens. So normally, you know, what happens in this office is people will put things down if they don't want it anymore. It's like, you know, go to town and have yeah. some fun with that, whatever that is. So and it happens all the time with magazines, uh, DVDs, whatever, whatever it is. And we have T-shirts. Happens often. So I'm sitting out there on the couch and the table. I've never seen this. Happens all the time. Where is it? Is there a, a <laughs> just, 
So whether it's on the table just over the air, or that for example, a desk? perfect example is this gummy bear thing, right? Someone stuck a thing of gummy but that's bears in. in the kitchen on the counter. It wasn't on the it, kitchen it was yesterday. On the it was on the table. table. It was oh, okay. on a conference table. So it's either the conference table or whatever. So yesterday, I'm sitting down on the couch and on the table, and there's nothing there yet. I go back, I go to the bathroom, I come back, and there's these Blu-rays sitting on the table, like three boxes of them. And I'm like, oh, lots of Blu-rays. I'm like, all right, is anything good? So I look in, it's like. Teen Wolf and and uh, Mr. And Starman Mom. were they all in the in the plastic? Yeah. yeah, they're all brand new. Like so, it's like okay, great, it's class. That's very nice of somebody to do. So cool. I start. But you just assume that they're there for you because usually that's because the case. it wasn't because it wasn't closed. It was open with basically when anytime these things are open on the table, it's they're open. Go to town because I, that's usually what happens all the time in this office. Happened for the last for the four or five years I've been here. Yes, and so. And there was another one. So, okay, so we're digging our paws in, and then Riley comes in, digging his paws in, and then Roca or somebody else. And then we, at one point we go, are we sure that somebody <laughs> left these here for us? And then we're like. Definitely not. And then we're, and then we're going, then we're going, well, there are guests that are here, but they wouldn't bring in Blu-rays, random Blu-rays. <laughs> so, like, ah, so we're going through it, pawing through it, and they're like, oh, I got this one, I got this one. And then we're like, the feeling comes back. <laughs> And we're like, you know, very possible, yeah. not for us. So we, we this doesn't feel right. So we put him back, right? <laughs> Lo and behold, people who are being interviewed come out and go, oh, good, the Blu-rays are here. So they, they, they stick them, they hold them, they're, they're carrying the Blu-rays, and they're like, they, and they get so excited, they're talking, oh, Mr. Mom, this is like, <laughs> yeah, we almost wiped what, out the what, guest. What were they there for? We don't I know. Don't we don't know. know. Oh, you were the guest there for? No. no what oh. was the guest Blu-rays there? No for? one knows. They That's, had them delivered is, to Collider. My, no, my thing. No, because it was open. They brought it with them. My thing is, why do you bring those there and stick them on a table, then go to your interview? Why not just bring because them with you? They don't know the culture of this environment. I'm sure they don't think if they leave a ton of Blu-rays on a table, they'll get taken. But you and leave are all a bunch of thieves. Right. I don't know. Right. Thieving environment. Right. Like it's not. It's not like they. If they left their purse and then you kind of yeah, rummaging through their purse, purse. All the time. yeah, and we rummage through it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of which, you won't get too far. You better delete some of that. Mm. Some of that rummage, some of that stuff that we went through yesterday. The, the uh, oh boy. Yeah. Uh, well, here let me let me just re- like go back real quick to Roxy going. Oh, that's information I could have used for my tweet, Roxy. Uh, for two days Are in you, a row you're now. You're really you're hung up on that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, it, for two days in a row now, two days. Don't look at the camera. Don't give that stupid. She's frenzing it. She's frenzing it. She's frenzing it. Get ready for me to come back at you. Go, okay, go ahead. Ah. So, so, all you have to do is look at the Collider tweet that they tag you in every time that you're on you, this show. You know that my Twitter does not show me that stuff. I've showed you so many times. You will tag me in things, and it's not coming up. And again, in sounds the most, like a you problem and the not most a me obnoxious problem. Obnoxious way I can possibly say it, but once I got verified and it started segmenting things out, I have to click on different. Right, here's my tabs. click on here's, here's my here. oh, good for you. Yeah, click on the here's, here's my big issue. Real easy. That orange one wasn't very good. <laughs> The creamsicle one or just no, plain No, the creamsicle was delicious. Yeah. I didn't I had... like the creamsicle. You told me to try it and I did not like it. Mm. Good. Then more for me. I, I just, when I, <laughs> that, it was, is, that wasn't mine, was it? No. Nah, that wasn't I mine. think that was uh, the guy on the planet in Phantom Menace. <laughs> All right. flew like the thing. My you. turn or not? Guado. About what? Guado. About Makuga. Guado. Oh, sure. Okay, so Star Wars. I pull up, and by the way, I'm two cars in front of Makuka. Anybody who knows me knows it takes me a couple minutes to get out of my car. Or to find the place. The, well, that takes right. more than a couple minutes. Right. But I'm just kind of one of those slow to get out of the car people. You know, you got to grab your bag, check check your lipstick, you make sure the I lights are I have that problem off. every morning. Lipstick. Okay, yeah. so I'm doing all things. And I get out of the car, and I see Makuka's parked two cars over. So I'm standing outside of my car, putting on my bag, and Josh walks right by me. And I say... I didn't see her. I said, huh. hi. And by no, the by, nothing. your hi would have been heard had there been not next to the five freeway. So he is not on his phone. He's not doing anything. <laughs> hey. He just, oh, oh, yo. No, 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 no. Did yeah. you say hi low? Did you say hi low? so loud. That. Exactly like that. Hi. But you said it low? So then I said. Like, give me the volume. Like hi. Hi. But, 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 like that. See, but here, do one more time. Hi. Yeah, see, I don't know about that. Because, so, because uh, you might not be able to hear that uh, with to- the all. Totally. Okay. But then he's walking, I'm going to say the distance from me to this door. Yeah. 
the whole walk from the car to the office. So I, I said, hi, again, nothing. So I texted him. What did you do him. to him? Did you do something? So I texted him and I said, hey, can you hold the door? Because I can't get in this office without one of you guys. And I stand oh, outside so for five out. minutes he every day. Out. Well, I don't if, if you I don't have my phone on ring because I'm not a monster. And uh, <laughs> I only have it on vibrate. And sometimes I don't feel the vibration in my pocket. And for that, I apologize. Okay. But you shouldn't have to yell at us about not getting a headline because there's a tweet Every day at 1040, uh, 940, f- 940. didn't get the notification of my text, but I should get the notification of Collider's. I'm going to let you guys finish this. Every day at 940. Every, Cody, when do you, you send the tweet out? Or Dorian. I don't do anything, Josh. That's uh, Dorian. See, yeah, it's Dorian. Dorian! He's not here. Okay. <laughs> when he comes in. <laughs> also, comes you in. open that door and no one's here. No, <laughs> Go no, that was him. Wow. Nobody gives a shit. Nine, nope. n- between 9.30 and 9.40, because I'm usually in my car and I feel Nine. a buzz on my phone from Collider tagging me in a photo okay. with the thumbnail well, I don't get of that. Okay. Okay. I am still unclear on what time people come to work here. It depends. Mm. Depends on why. I mean, we're always here early because we start at 9. And, and, I, and I want everybody, just, just, for, just for a second, because I, I, I have a therapy session that I need to do and it has nothing to do with any of you. Okay. So l- <laughs> let, me, let me do this. I got a problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's some kind of moron. In one of these groups, mm. this guy coming around saying, "Did you just bury?" Go- the God damn it! I just wanted to fix the motherfucker. I just wanted to do that one bit. God damn it! I knew it. I did myself a, a thing this morning. Oh, and I said, "I said I'm going to try to do." I said, "I'm going to do try to do one fucking monologue as Pacino and see if anybody interrupts me." Yeah. And I knew you would be of the course. motherfucker that did it. Of no, course, you didn't. because you be no, no, be, no, because I just said because I just said right now I wanted I to, to stop for a second, thing, and yeah. you said, "All right," okay, yeah. and you stopped. If I hadn't said anything to you, then it would have been you. (laughs) But even if I said it, I did a test this morning, and I said, I just want to try to do this one thing. I want to call out a troll today as Pacino. That's the only thing I want to do. But you motherfuckers have to go into the highs with the highway. and Yeah, you had a bit. It went on for six no, minutes. No, you could have resolved it. You could have said it. You could have done it and be like, now listen, I got something I want to beef on. And then you go. But instead, you're just like, oh, here I go with Pacino. Watch me do my impression. It's I was, a Christian it was, impression it was, time. It wasn't a Christian impression time. It was a, it was a new way to here go Here I come after. talking about trolls for the 90th show in the room. Oh, and you did it the other way, too. Oh, yeah. Hairball. That thing is amazing. Oh, that that's, thing that's going on right now. I love it. Don't oh, yeah. do anything with that. How dare you even attempt to. I want to fucking frame that and put it in my my non-existent office oh man but now this guy now i got should you try it again or no it's no. over okay do it i had I, do it's it. over come on well let's take a vote come on let's take a vote it doesn't matter raise anymore. your hand okay. if you want set you up. I, I don't need i don't need i don't need the i don't need the fluffing to go go back do into it. it i did a test <laughs> and i had the test and i said for a second there for a split second i'm like holy shit he's gonna let me get through this but he didn't. I, I knew it. You son of a bitch. Because I thought you were going to do a therapy and like resolve the situation of, of me clearly being in the right about Roxy. And then instead... Next I... time, just say, hello! But he, he was changing that subject. Oh, he was yeah. going into was a new direction. It. He Got didn't it. want it. It was okay. done. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. The, the improv show has now changed over from the 9 to the 9.30. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the UCB well, Sunset. There's the nonsense. The nonsense was just, was just one... Because I still see... It, it, the comments, not necessarily comments alone, oh, boy. but I don't know, it's just one thing. Oh, boy. But I said, I just... Because yesterday, Movie Talk debuted. The yeah. new one. Perry! Yes. Perry! Perry! Oh, the best part about that was that? when we went in there to, like, wish Perry... Like, good luck, and we're chanting Perry, and Thad comes over, he's like, uh, that's not what we wanted. Uh, they're doing an interview right next right. door. And, and stop stealing the guest's Blu-rays. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but, and this is, I don't feel, I don't think that it's in me to just be, like, I have to throw a stupid thing in there every time. Mm-hmm. I can't just be, just going to, I want my, the gesture is going to be nice. For sure, but I can't end it nice. No, I just I don't have it in me. Like I went to Perry, I'm I walked you. in because Perry, we all wish Perry good luck. I said, "Good luck, we're all counting on you. Uh, congratulations, Perry, Perry." And then everybody got out, and right before I said, "Now, Perry, don't blow it," and I shut the door. And she she, she got a smile. She got a smile out of it because so, she yeah. knows who you I lightened am. Lightened the mood. Yeah, that's what you got to do. <laughs> but. But I just felt like I had to say, don't blow it. Oh, I thought there's backlash on that. You're no. just explaining no. yourself? I just felt that that's what I had to do. Okay. But anyway, Movie Talk has this new format. And some people are still trying to figure out the, the 20 minutes. They don't like it. Some people are getting used to it. People just need to get used to it in general. It's sure. a movie news show. People don't but like change. I saw in the movie, and right. people had this big thread on the Movie Talk for movie fans. And, and there's one guy who just said, he did, it's the same thing that you get here. 
every time. For p- new people who will click on the title, see the title of the Star Wars thing, go, I want to see him talk about the 2022. Are you going to win the 2022? Oh, is this uh, which which show is this? Oh, I got a, a oh yeah, I figured out. Oh, 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 who are these people? Twenty Star Wars? What, what are they talking about? Hello, in the highway, in the freeway. What is he doing about Pacino? Oh. What's, what's happening? Uh, and they get scared, nervous. They don't know what's going on. So this one guy, so this one guy, he says inside of the comments section, he goes, you know, a uh, collider life is boring AF. AF. Twenty minutes. All they do is talk about bullshit. And I was like, because that's the fucking show, Chief. <laughs> and I was like, it was, it's not voices a, are amazing. I said, it's not a movie. Your new voice with the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that little guy. It's kind of like <laughs> Adam Sandler, but, well, but he's like the nervous little, guy. He just yeah. he tries to figure it out. He's like, he walks in. He goes, oh, you know, what's, uh, what's uh, happening over here? <laughs> Why are they doing this? What's uh, I mean, who's the guy with the thing on his hair? And the guy with the oh, he's got really nice hair, boy. <laughs> Not talking about movies yet. What's, uh, <laughs> Roxy, what? She wearing a sweatshirt? I love this Roxy. guy. <laughs> She's not a fan of this guy. She doesn't find Ro- anything Roxy's fucking funny. Face. Not, uh, yeah. um, that was hysterical. That's. <laughs> <That's-> <laughs> I swear it. It's not true. I find something. I, I, I laughed once in 2007. It was glorious. Life itself is amazing. That was not funny, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> we got to name that guy. His name will be Lewis. Lewis. I like Lewis. <laughs> yes. It hurts my brain. Oh. Lewis? Because, yeah, there's... I feel like, <laughs> You know, oh, you know the whale it? fact yesterday is kind of like why that. Is it, why is it hit you? You know, it whales, whales with legs. No, you know ASMR. You guys know what that yeah, is. Of it course. sounds dirty. Yeah, it does, but yeah. that's what that voice kind of sounds like a little oh, bit. Oh, because it's and like quiet. It does something where it like t- triggers you when t- you fall it, asleep. It like, tickles you. Yeah, it just yeah. it does something weird. Well, just, like, I it, love it, that. It, that's it that's just what that, you go for yeah, on ASMR. It's just that confusion of people who. It, it's Lewis is very confused. It, Lewis is confused. He's just confused because yeah. he clicks and he sees the title. Well, yeah, but different because <laughs> Roxy knows what she's getting into. Lewis has no fucking idea. <laughs> Lewis, sees title, <laughs> Lewis sees the title of the of the show and thinks that automatically for the whole two freaking hours we're going to be talking about Star Wars. Like yesterday, Lewis didn't know what was going on with the, with the Spider Man thing. Yeah. But here's the funny. two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. That's all they talk about. Spider Man. Two minutes. <laughs> is that Lu- is that Lewis? That's screaming? his cousin Ned. Oh. <laughs> Well, Lewis, there's a Lewis inside Roxy's head, and he's just going like, "Oh, I take a left here." Oh, 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 wait, oh yeah, wait, wait, wait. they're all they're they're all. I Lewis's. thought that was funny. There you go. <laughs> but, Everyone uh, has a little Lewis, Lewis in them. Everybody's. But but anyway, this, this wasn't Lewis. Lewis. This guy was not Lewis. Mine's on the, Louisa. Yeah. No, this guy. This guy was just. It was just. And he, you know, it's. Don't. I told him. I said it's not a. It's a morning radio show. Yeah. That's <laughs> we, we we're gonna talk about movies when we get to it, yeah. and it's like, and I have to keep, and I realize that I have to keep explaining this to people, not the hardcore fan base that that they, they know. They're great. But as new people are gonna pop in, when are they gonna talk about the? I don't know. I don't know the answer to your question. I feel so conflicted. Go, because go watch movie talk. You guys know I read all of the comments, yes. much to yeah. Josh's uh, chagrin. Dismay. Yeah, yeah. Sugar, chagrin. But. I've been seeing in the comments. They're annoyed that we're talking about the comments, which I, I don't care about uh, that either. No, I'm not saying you do. Oh, okay. But I, but I hear you guys. But also, I like a chance to respond. Like people will go in there and say these horrible things sometimes. Right. And this is uh, guess what? I have a bigger platform than you. Right. So you're I'm allowed to talk res- about it. Right. Like I, it just that's, doesn't quite make sense point. that they're like it's you're not allowed. Point. You shouldn't say anything. It's Why? Sh- what? You know what? <laughs> you should let them hit you in the face with the rock. Yeah. yeah. Just stand there. Let them. Don't mention it. Get hit in the face with the rock and don't mention it. Just move on. Why do you even acknowledge it? Because I got hit in the face with a rock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. Like you guys shouldn't t- shouldn't talk about right. it. What? Right, it's our show. Yeah, <laughs> because that's the thing people don't. What? People again. I'd like I'd like to talk about something real quick. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Um, uh, it's me, Pacino, uh, uh, coming in. Didn't uh, work. Damn it. Didn't work. Yeah. Was, I, yeah, I thought what you were going was, for, though. Was, if if was you could good. have not broke, then yeah, it would have been okay. I know. Okay. I, I, I should have I stepped know. into it. Yeah. I know. Because I, here's the thing. I've, I'm not good at impressions. This we all know, okay? <laughs> I can only do like a Pittsburgh accent, and I can yell like Adam Sandler, and that's <laughs> about it. So if I start with an Al Pacino, I always have to start with like a hua. But I, it's not very good, right. and I know this. So then as soon as I start doing it, I start like some weird southern thing for some reason. He's from New York, but yeah. for some reason he always kind of goes up here. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you going there? Bring it down. Did you ever see the... Stop it! <laughs> My 
favorite part of last week, all Collider Live last week, I was not here for it, and I couldn't believe you guys didn't absolutely just start breaking into tears, was when you asked when Perry you were, oh. what your favorite impression was. Oh, and she was. said a fart. And she said a fart. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's I, right. love, I mean, you do amazing impressions, and that's what that's she'll the remember you Well, because to be fair to her, like when she's, she's the one that uh, anytime she's standing around, I'll go behind her and go, Mm-hmm. And she's but used I to can't believe of everything you do. That's, that's how she'll one. remember. Well, she's you. not on this show. And when you what is yes, what did she do? Oh, this is another thing I've been doing because she's it's so fun. She's like I tried to do it yesterday. Well, I bombed. I don't really think you did because that's what I was going to talk about. She's like the little sister, so we like to play. Prank. I play pranks on her all the time, and the stupidest pranks, right? So <laughs> she was she good fun. with that or no? Yeah, she she cracks up and she gets mad at me, but in a, in a funny way. Yeah. Um, and so we were at Star Wars Celebration, and I was just doing this really dumb thing where I would I would point to the floor and I go, "You just dropped that." And she looked down. And I go, "Dad," <laughs> and, she, and, and she and she just goes, "Yeah." And she fell for it. I mean, maybe eight to ten times, right? So, but eventually she was start, starting to pick up on it. So I'm sitting next Is to. Is that a real number? Eight to ten. Close to oh, it. Uh, yeah. 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 So, Perry. Yeah. So, Come on, girl. So Riley is in sitting next to me in one of the panels. It might have been the the it was Rise, the, of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. And so she's sitting next to to Riley, and I said, "She's not going to fall for it if I do it." But if you do it, <laughs> and so he looks, he looks at Perry. He goes, "Oh, Perry, you know he's talking about something." He goes, "Oh, and you dropped that on the floor." And she looks down, and, he, and, per- and Riley goes, "Huh?" <laughs> <laughs> and she just was, "Ah, yeah. so shit!" Ye- so yesterday, so yesterday, I sent Makuga M- M- over to do it, and she's in the middle of a conversation with Thad about movie talk. He doesn't even wait. Like Riley waited to find his moment. Makuga just steps right in the middle of the conversation. She goes, "You dropped that." <laughs> she goes. What? He goes, ah! <laughs> and she was that one she was a little pissed at. She's like, I'm in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> you know that moment when, when you're just like, oh, I'm gonna click on this Facebook video. It's like, yeah. well, what is this? And a car goes That's through what it was. a shopping mall. Yeah. That was me. I'm like, move out of the way. Did you drop it? <laughs> but it's really, it's really good. I actually want fans to start doing that. It's pretty it. good. I'm they, they try, say, it. try to do it until you drop that. I'm mm-hmm. not good at things like that. We know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You might be all right with it. Mm. I don't, I, see, I don't think you give yourself enough credit because I think you'd actually be pretty good in that. By the way, I didn't. I wasn't here when you shot your inside schmodown with Ken Knapsack. It just went live uh, last night. I thought the slap was controversial. Man. Oh, I haven't seen it went live. Oh man. See, some, I wonder if people have been tweeting oh, at me and yeah. I haven't even. There's known. some. No, I don't know. I think a lot of people well, realize well, that well, went well, up. So controversial. I want people to watch it. I'm not even going to bring it up. Uh, why it's it's uh it's inside Schmodown the episode with uh, Roxy just went up, and uh, yeah they talk about everything that kind of went down in uh, Chicago, but w- then there's stuff in Houston that's going to happen. Slap. Yeah, that's like a different character. I I, I don't hate it. It's not Pacino. It's, not it's close his to Pacino. It's a, Hal Pacino. Hal Pacino. Yeah, he's a good guy. You should, see, you should have went Sal. Sal Pacino. Sal Pacino. Uh, run Sal out. Al. Yeah. Pal. Paolo, okay. <laughs> Paolo Pacino. Hey, he's my buddy Paolo. The Paolo, his, Cal. Uh, Paolo. his Spanish friend. He could be yeah. Cal Pacino. Cal Pacino. We should make he some kind of drawing. Runs a local grocery store in the Bronx. Give me my kibbles and bits. Right. Oh, okay. I don't like that dog. Show. I like it. Yes. I'm gonna pee on that tree. <laughs> <laughs> Lift your leg. <laughs> Hoo ah. Got a shit. Okay. More beans. Roxy trying to figure it out. No, I, I got this one. <laughs> <laughs> so proud. You were so proud. So no, brave. I got this one. So brave. Hey, I'm yeah, so, so brave. So brave. Uh, what happened to so brave? Because I really, I really am. Yeah, I'm really so brave. You beef yourself but, up. We just brought it back. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's kind of like saying you're, I'm like, I went casual today. Just like pointing it out. Like, I'm so brave. Yeah, but the fact that I talked about openly how many shirts I tried on <laughs> is so brave. Do you have that many hoodies? No, I didn't know I was going hoodie. Uh, yeah. I knew it was cold out today, mm-hmm. and then I put on my Bruce Springsteen sweatshirt. What's with this, this little movement that you're doing each, each sentence? Oh, really? Yeah, it's a, a, little, a lot of movement, a lot of body this. language. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think you have bad posture at all, by the way. Uh, well, you would be wrong. Oh, I apologize. No, I, I try to have fine posture. I don't think this chair helps. No. Uh, chairs, a big, chairs, chairs a piece and of shit. I... Cody, fix the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> I, way, I love Cody hey, so much. Cody, oh, yeah. Where get are in we here. at? Cody, fix the chair. Fix the chair. What are you, some kind of moron? Should, hey. I, should I try it? What, fix the Chino? chair? Cody, fix the chair. That's that's good. It's not bad. It's, it's pretty, pretty good, good for uh, the, the chair. They're Cody. being nice to you. It's yeah. terrible. Oh. 
<laughs> we were trying to be a little kind. Yeah. Do you guys want to know something? Curly Hal and Paolo Cacino. Do we? I, I don't think we do, but you're going to tell us. Anyway, <laughs> so I well. am. So I. Oh, you, wrote, you wrote the shit letter. I wrote the shit letter. Oh. Okay. So I came home last night and there was two pieces of shit on the lawn. Oh. oh. And then I. Were they big pieces of shit? Big. And then okay. I. And now, there was did you tons smell of it? flies. Was that a human shit? And I smelled it. <laughs> and there was dew this morning. You smelled the shit? You smelled the dew? There was dew this morning too. Oh. Like morning dew. And it made it even dew worse. Because when I went out, oh. they, were, they were all Mountain still duty. there. The pieces of poop. <laughs> Mountain Dew. <laughs> sorry. sorry there, Roxy. Just trying to, you know. <laughs> Make so, I love that you cracked up at that. I love that it's happening on the side here. I'm listening to the story. It feels like middle Mark. school again. <laughs> duty. <laughs> this, this is when. <laughs> ah, duty. <laughs> this, is, this, this is when. This is when the teacher separates Christian and I in the yeah. backseat of yeah. third grade English. Hey, Pala, you're over there. Makuga, you're over there. It was just a fact. It was that voice. I'm just, just, he just slips in Mountain. Mountain Duty. <laughs> it just, it was just fine. I mean, okay. Ahead, so I texted her. I texted her at, this morning. At, I waited till nine in the morning because I hear etiquette wise, you're not supposed the, to text anybody before nine. Right Do around that time, that tweet goes that? out for uh, I don't know. So I waited till nine and then I, Wrote her like a hey girl. No, then, no, you did, <laughs> did you actually do a no. hey girl? Yeah, well, first I wrote a hey girl. <laughs> Can you read not, the text? And then I took text. it away and said good morning. Right. And so exclamation well, point. But it doesn't read like that. It doesn't read like good morning. It just reads good morning. Uh, exclamation point. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I don't think. I think from a girl you would get like the good morning. Okay, fine. Good morning. All right, so you get the good yeah. morning. So then, and then I calmly explained it to her. I was like, it's threefold. Number one, I almost. <laughs> oh, now you really went into it. Number one, I almost step Listen. in it all the time. Number two, it's causing tons of flies right outside of my window. Okay. Number three, anytime I bring anybody over, they're greeted I'm by sorry, a big this was, pile this was, of this was a text? Yeah. Well, how did you get the woman's text? You, you said this yesterday. You, you got her number? Well, I got her number when I moved in because okay. we, we text about, like, if I have a package at the door, she'll text me okay, or whatever. Okay, okay. You got a package. Um, and I said you guys have it's been full of shit. absolutely lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, Rox. <laughs> I, it's just unbelievable. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm wondering too when they're going to talk about Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, me too. Now at this point. So, go ahead. so I sent it to her. <laughs> oh boy. This I broke one of those days. Days. And it was, and it was at this point where I wanted to tell you stop because the bit was dead and you killed it and then you come back. A package full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry, Roxy. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I won't interrupt again. I Tell promise. the shit story. So, uh, anyway, sent a nice text, <laughs> and she responds and was like, "Totally, um, it's been a really hard couple of months, and I've been out of bags for this, <laughs> that time." From you oh, can go to you. she did buy she said, so I will plan on getting more bags soon. Yeah, that's. Bad dog That's owner. That's horrible. There's an awful dog. She owner. really came off her mountain quick. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. There's never shit in the yard. I'm out of bags. Uh, yeah, it's really just yeah. a bag issue. Right. Did she so, come and guess off what? Her mountain is she, this is not oh. going to change. Is she, on, is she on some stuff? No, I I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know her well at all. Uh, but she just said, like, yeah, totally. It's been a really hard couple of months and I haven't had any bags. No, this well, this well, is not going to change. I think she's full of shit. Yeah, yeah. she's full of shit. This is not going to change. I haven't she's, she's to a, it yet she like, doesn't pick up shit. There are yeah. a lot of people out there in LA with their dogs. I've met them all over the place. She's like, you have to understand, I've been using random things when I can find them. So, like, I will pick up get, bags soon. Get bags. Dummy. I don't how, under- how, Are bags expensive? Mark, as a dog owner, are bags expensive? Um, no. And no. plus, this is what I do. There are doggy bags everywhere in L.A., yeah. right? Yeah. I grab like five sure. as I go in and just replenish. Totally. It's yeah. real simple. I was surprised. I mean, at least she admitted to the problem. Because yeah. I was about to send her 19 poop pics, and yeah. that would have made a but harder she least, conversation. She, least, yeah, she, she said, now, yeah, but you know, know, I don't now, have bags. Now you know what you got to do? Drop off bags at a, at a place. I was thinking about just totally. buying her bags, being like, bags. really appreciate it. Yeah, you yeah, buy like, her bags. Here you go. I already had a tough time. Here's... I am doing a lot of head movement. You are, right? See? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you could, you could talk, the, the bag would be a nice neighborly gesture, like as a nice, like, friendly gesture. That's uh, kind of, and if the poop continues, idea. then you send the pictures so, of the yeah, poop. Yeah, you just start with, you say, 
totally hear what you were saying, and I, I had a chance to go out to get here, get some bags. Here you go, and I pick up the shit. Fuck face. That's, yeah. that's, that's how you, but, and, I, end it nicely like that. I, I called my dad <laughs> last night it. though, yeah. and you guys know from brief stories on the show, my dad is a fuck off kind of person. Right. So I was like, okay, let me see if I'm being too harsh by sending poop pics to somebody. Because I said, was gonna start it. with it. No. Oh really? He and this is how I know it's too far. He was like, trust me, sending people pictures of poop never gets you anywhere. Oh. I know. Coming from experience. And I was like, oh, I have right. no idea what that means. Yeah, and also, a, I'm not going to ask the follow-up question. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. A poop I've been detective. sending pictures of poop to people <laughs> right. for years. Cody, is a, Cody is a poop detective, uh, would you would you say uh, dropping off the bags is a good idea so then the criminal will be forced to pick up the poop? Or once you see this kind of behavior, it doesn't ever change? I mean, at this point... Either do that or you poop on her lawn right. as like retaliation. Not a bad <laughs> idea. Roxy, does it, Roxy poops once every two weeks, so That's it might true. take right. a while. When do you get Dagnino to do it? That's I, true. I'll just bring my dog over and let her go to town. Right. Or right. I'll get there Ken some beans and invite him over. <laughs> there is. True. Get him anything. Mm. Yeah. You can't, I mean, yeah, get Ken anything. It'll shit all over the place. I had uh, beans yesterday. Nothing. Mm. Nothing. Mm. What kind but of beans you have? They were... Um, the white, you know, that sounds the like Clint bean. Eastwood. Uh, yeah, it's almost like Clint What's Eastwood. What's that called? Cantonelli beans? What are you going to take a Cantaloni. shit? Cantaloni. No, no, that's Italian. Uh, but Cantalini. Eat, Eat your beans. Eat your beans. Eat the fucking beans. Come on, over them in your mouth. Eat the fucking beans. Eat the fucking beans. Eat the fucking beans. Eat the fucking beans. Shit on your neighbor's lawn. It's hip with a sweatshirt. When right. you know how to eat it, <laughs> greet it, and beat it. We are in a mood here today because wow, uh, I'm digging good it. stuff. All right, this <laughs> if you can't beat them, stuff. Damn it, Tus Malchin coming in, coming in hot. Hours. Yo, coming in hot. He, 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 I think pen. he will have the same kind of weirdness as us, though. I'm yeah. telling you yeah. guys. After the he's moves. a great dude. I really like him. Oh, he's so awesome. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on to this news because we do have a lot of news. They talked about this shit. They talked about this shit, they talked about, they talked about this oh, shit on the lawn. Well, you know it's going to be news time because Mark Riley opened his computer. Yeah. They're actually yes. <laughs> 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 talking about movies now. Oh, oh crap. Oh, there it is. What do you got? Wow, that was a abrupt <laughs> stop to that. He's so logging in. Because apparently it turned into kid, new kids on the block. Yeah. yeah. Lewis, Lewis got a friend. Inside baseball question. Talk. Did you tell Mark he's not allowed to have his computer open unless we're going no. through? Oh, okay. No, but I, no, but I like to be part, yeah, of, part of the conversation. conversation. Yeah. 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 That because he, because we've, uh, we've I'll had, go in. We've already figured out that he's addicted to technology. So. Yeah. Did, was there something new about today that made you want to have your computer next to you? Yes, I was looking for Mother's Day ideas. Oh, what'd you come up with? Uh, ideas for brunch, a bunch of brunch places, because this club that I, we, we joined this club, which is really, I, I love it, but they, I, I don't think they dropped the ball, because I, my my wife and my mother-in-law didn't love the, uh, the, the, we went for Cinco de Mayo, and they didn't love the Cinco de Mayo dinner that was out there. Oh, no. I loved it. And my daughters loved it. They're my my one was not a taco fan. No, or? she just she she thought there was gonna be more like enchiladas uh, and a little bit more. And it was you know it was just it's kind like of taco taco bar. Taco bar and, mm. and but my, my I wish I had video of my one and a half year old listening to the Mexican music, jamming the beans in her mouth, just kind of moving her head <laughs> and just dancing, slamming food in her face like she was like she might have been an attorney. You couldn't take video yeah. in there or something. No, I just didn't think about it because I was just, I was so just taking it in. She was she was like a pig and shit. Just yeah. like, so happy, and then my my seven year old loving it with me going back and forth, but my wife and and mother in law just not <laughs> not digging. Do you not digging do, it. do you get your wife a Mother's Day present? I'm going to, yeah. Is that what, how it works? Fitbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, not definitely not do doing the Fitbit. I never return that fucking what, thing. You give yet. it to Viv to give to Sadie? Or no, no, no. You... She's got her own card and stuff that she does. Oh, but okay. I, but I but anyway, so we had this brunch planned out at the club. We were gonna do. Did I step in it? I asked two personal questions. No. Okay. No. And um and then shut up. <laughs> and, and yeah. But then uh, when we were at the, we were gonna go to this club for the brunch. And now she because of the, what she went through. Not what went through, but because she didn't enjoy. The oh, taco bar. Me once, she went through with the taco bar, and, and she said she didn't like the taco bar. She's like, "Yeah, maybe we'll go somewhere else." So uh, oh, no. now, now, now I'm scattering with four days to go. So hmm. yeah. Me. So that's that's why the computer's open. Gotcha. Okay. So anyway, but what's going on in the world of movie news? Hey, did you? Th this is not movie news, but there's uh, news. HBO did officially uh, release a statement on the Starbucks. And, and gate. I heard, that, and and I don't know if this is true or not. It was just a joke text by Snelling. Did they officially edit it out? I heard that they edited no, it No, because a man and I watched uh, a replay of the episode last night, and yeah. it was still there. It was still there last night. Yeah. Maybe, I maybe did read they, an article saying they got rid of it. Maybe they edited it out for, for Blu-ray? Maybe. 
They, so HBO they edits Game of Thrones to remove it. It's really weird. Yeah, there you go. Really weird that they didn't do it's that in the so, first place. It is so well, they didn't blatant. Know. It is they so, didn't know. Yeah. If you look no at it, that up. It's I crazy. Mean, with all the script supervisors and yeah. everything going on, all the people running that thing. Yeah. I, well, I saw a post. I saw a post though from somebody. You know why they might have gotten confused by it? Because they, then they showed a reverse shot with all the candles, yeah. and it looked like Starbucks cups. Okay. Um, so maybe to someone they looked quick, and there were so many people on set, and they their, didn't see it. Their tweet was pretty funny though. It, it's the exact same cup that Roxy's using yeah. right yeah. now. What, what was their tweet? So this is the. Uh, the press release. Yeah. In response to inquiries from those who saw a craft service coffee cup in Sunday night's episode of Game of Thrones, the latte that appeared in the episode was a mistake. Daenerys had ordered an herbal tea. <laughs> Pretty funny. That's pretty good. Pretty good. good. I think if you're going to do it, it's yeah. good. Way. Yeah. But it's also like people were. I saw, I saw the most ridiculous reaction <laughs> on Twitter. This guy is like, oh my God. And so I can't believe it. And laughing and screaming about how funny it was that they did it. It's like, it's a mistake. Yeah. It's a mistake. Made. It's like a it big, big deal. If this is, and I think they, one of the executives said the same thing. He said, if this yeah. is, if this is the thing that they're having the biggest problem with, I think we're doing okay. Yeah. 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 Right? I, I thought I saw some um, flack for Amelia Clark. And I felt bad for her because when you're an actress and your it's job is to job. be sitting there, yeah. the last thing you're paying attention to is if there's a cup there. She should know to put it underneath the table. She's thinking about dragons. Yeah. yeah. There was a water bottle in Downton Abbey, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Uh, well, which was, is like a famous yeah. one of the flubs like that. But honestly, the like the freaking out of the cup, it's it's kind of funny. It's, it's it, it is what it is. But you you gotta like you gotta give the credit to people that caught it. Like, I wouldn't have even looked no, at it. No, I missed it. I, I saw Completely. It. I, I would think that was a candle unless yeah. you said, hey, it's a Starbucks cup. Yeah. Who do you think put the, do you think they found out who put their cup there? I think it was Amelia Clark. Oh, you do? Yeah, I think it was, she probably had a, she probably had a coffee that she was drinking and then did for, you know. 16 hour shoot days inside 16 of 16 hour shoot, she's in the middle of the scene. She's yeah. concentrated on her performance and she doesn't realize that the cup's in front of her. And that's a huge non-speaking performance for her right yeah. there. Has I mean, she said anything? Oh, I don't uh, know. I don't see it's anything. It's funny, though, because you know, because that's that's the thing. You would think that why should she have to? Mm -hmm. But because it, it's like an actual controversy, which is so ridiculous. It's like, so what? It's yeah. just, I mean, there's there's old school, like, what's the, what's the Indiana Jones one where the, the, the plane, the, you see the... Uh, you see something in the sky uh, during. It's huh. like a, is it a plane or I can't remember in which it one? Is. Do you remember in Last Crusade? Do the do the you guys see uh, Cody? Check I don't out. Think I know this. Last Crusade. Um, Flub. E yeah, try Error on a Beach, because maybe maybe that'll. Amelia Clark has. That's it. One million followers and has not tweeted since 2013, <laughs> saying that it's her account. Okay, Charlemagne, Indiana Jones, and Lester. Is, is this it? It's like it happens right this. It's on the beach after my they lovely blow up Charlemagne, there. when he's got the umbrella. Yeah, but there's something in the back. I can't remember what it is. It's right. It's. It, I always remember that there's some kind of shit that happens. There's some kind of flub on this, the beach. Do you like Last Crusade more than Raiders? Or? No, Raiders. Okay. It's, it's. Come on, Dad. Keep keep going. It's, yeah, it's right around here. It's up in the mm. sky or something. I can't remember. The He's out of bullets. And suddenly I remembered it, it, my shot. Yeah, I think it's right after he, after he blows. Let's keep the, the scene up. So it's the scene on the beach. Something goes down. And he starts flapping around with the... It's not a plane, obviously, because that's... I mean, it's a current plane. Is that what it was, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, look how dated the CGI is. It's right after this, maybe. Just probably check in the comment section and see what the hell it is. I, I think it, this is just a clip from. The no, no, movie. go back up. No, no, no. This is it. This is, is there's it? something. Yeah, it's it's this. What the hell is it? I can't remember. P people are probably watching right now. Yeah. Alex, are you in? The, you, is Alex in here? Yeah, yeah he's here. He's what, here. Are they saying anything in the comment section? No, about I'm it? checking it out. No one's really. Saying double anything. double check. Double check and just Google it. I just like watching what, old see what scenes from last Some kind of the film errors in, uh, in 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 whether it's Indiana Jones or whatever it is. Amelia Clark is on Instagram and she I has do. not commented. Huh. I follow okay. her. It's fine. She's lovely. Yeah. Um, but anyway, who gives a shit about the coffee cup? It's like, <laughs> yeah. let, let it go. All right. What's uh, Alex? I'm gonna check back in and see all the. Dun, yeah, dun. Well, there's the goofs. Here are the goofs right now. Just zoom in. Um, in the castle, and yeah, just something about that. I'm telling you, there's something. I think about we have the to let it beach. go. Maybe. I know. When, when on the beach, it's possible to to see the spent cartridge. No, that's not it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, when the reflection of a camera is visible on his glasses during the close-up on his face. 
Yeah, whatever. Uh, that was a bust. All right, what's next? We tried. Yeah. Well, uh, as we know, Star Wars, we got some dates, but there's been a lot of uh, effect through all their releases, and Avatar yep. 2 has been delayed another it's year. a lot of delays, right? It's Avatar yeah. 2... Get now it's 20, 2021. How do they start shooting already or no? They start shooting, yeah. Uh, He's 20, done, I think, with Avatar 2, I think. I think they wrapped on it. It's going to be all post now. You think they just didn't realize what a massive undertaking post-production was going to yeah. be? Do you know when the original date was for Avatar 2? No. Do uh, you? 2018, right? 2014. That Holy was it really? Geez, it's been pushed back them. eight years. Damn. Development of the screenplay. Do you think this is to... the last pushback? It has to be. Yeah, they're saying it's because of the acquisition. So uh, give it a little time. But they're, right. they're filming it. All right, so, so we got Avatar in 2021. Avatar, Avatar 2, December 17, 2021. Avatar 3, December 22, wait, wait, wait. 2023. S- sorry. S- the, the Avatar 2 is 2021, and then 2023 is the next yeah. one? 2023. Okay, because they don't want to combat with Star Wars. And It'll be... St- yeah, every two years. Avatar two, Star Wars. So, Avatar so it's three, every two years. Star Wars. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So they've gone away from the one year uh, release for Star Wars, and they're going back to two, well, better than three, but but two years. Okay. Yeah. I've asked this question on the show before. Sure. Do we think that by Avatar four, and yeah, we're we'll looking at like straight to DVD, like the Maze Runner things? Nah, it's because James Cameron. James Cameron will, will go down. Like Ma- Maze Runner eventually just became. No, you're thinking of Divergent. Oh, Divergent. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. What are you talking about? No, it didn't. Divergent, Divergent like they did, the last one. The last one went yeah. to like straight to. They just gave up on the last one. The Divergent it was one. planned to be spun off into a TV show, but that never happened. Yeah. Correct. It, yeah. it didn't exactly. go Nobody wanted to DVD did, though. Yeah. It, all the movies had theatrical releases. No, but there was supposed to be a last one that they were actually shooting and whatever that was supposed to be. Then a TV series that was supposed to be straight to DVR or DVD, whatever. Well, let's say Mortal Engines because that never happened. Yeah. Part, past part one. Or not Mortal Engines. That's the one that just came out. That the just other, came the out. The other one, Beautiful Creatures, was was one that uh, came out. That was right. supposed to be a big series, and that, yeah. that that didn't make it. So no, I I don't. Because I think James Cameron will never allow that to happen. If okay. he if he wants to have all, he's going to go down with his ship. He's going to do all four. Well, that's Titanic. Nice. Thank you. Well done. Um, the, yeah. the, these movies, Avatar five releasing twenty twenty seven. I mean, it's like 2021, 2023, 2025, 2027. Jeez. I mean, these things better change the game the same way Avatar won because I, I don't know if anyone's going to give it. The, the sec, if, yeah. But here's the bigger question. Not will it go dr- direct to DVD because they're shooting all of them. That's, that's the problem, though. Is there, it, so I'm going to answer my own what question here. What do they here. need to change? Well, my something. question was going to be if the second one bombs, do they just say forget it? Mm-hmm. But if they're shooting all of them, you got to release all of them. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You'd think. I mean, there's definitely been movies that yeah. have just stayed on the cutting room floor. And but I just don't doubt. It's time to course correct, though. Yeah. I mean, reshoots. I, I just don't doubt James Cameron, though. I, I mean, people, I don't people have doubted him twice, and he, and he put up the numbers for the biggest movies of all time. I think this is his, like, his swan song F you. Yeah. Like, this is what I can do. Watch me do it and then knock it off. I, I, again, I don't really like Avatar, so I'm, I, I'm just in the, yeah. in the camp of I, I won't see these in the theater. I really couldn't care less. I just don't know why, if you're James Cameron, if you want this to be the next decade of your life. He's yeah. cause, well, because that's what makes James Cameron James Cameron. He's got a passion. He's got a vision for it. I actually really enjoy Avatar. I like Avatar too, just yeah. fine. But uh, I don't know if I need to see two, three, four. And five. I don't know if you, you. want to live with that for ten. Ye- like that's the only thing he's going to be working on. Right? Remember Ooh. though, after Titanic, he didn't he didn't do another movie. He he went under the water. Yeah. To, to, he went and found Titanic. Titanic yeah. you know? So it's like he, when he gets, when into he gets into it, he's into it. So that's that's what it's always refreshing. He's not going to half-ass this. It's going to be different. He's going to focus on these stories, and it's just a matter of he's got to make everyone care. He's got to make him care, and because if he doesn't get him to care, this is a bust. What can he like, do? <clears throat> it's got to make a good story, right? I mean, I, I will say this: if the word of mouth on Avatar Two is so incredible. Then yeah, I'll probably see it. But that's the you know, I mean, you all in this room have to be like, you have to see it because right. I went to see Avatar in the theater and I was like, eh, could have waited. Came running in like he did it. He yeah. did it. Like he he made he he made a movie, man. You got sure. he, he really made a great sequel. You got to check it out. That's I mean, it's possible. Yeah. But the other news is that we've been speculating for a long time about uh, Star Wars, what they were going to do, and once once Disney Plus was announced and Mandalorian was announced and Cassian then it was like okay well they don't need to do these w- movies once a year anymore because the, the appetite for Star Wars will still be wet um, and they've already announced I think season two for Mandalorian they're gonna do yeah. so you're gonna have you're gonna have the Mandalorian this year and if not next then the following year you're gonna have Cassian next year so you got a lot of Star Wars stuff the I also think that this announcement is 
pretty much to me anyway is a confirmation that we're getting the Benioff Weiss old Republic movies um, in 2022. Which you're happy 2022. about? Oh yeah, absolutely. And that it's a trilogy, don't you think? Yes. Well, I think that's, that that was really kind of spoiled by one of the Game of Thrones producers that it was a trilogy. Oh, that's right. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's so when I say old Republic, by the way, it's not. I don't want people to be. Uh, confused and think they're going to do a Knights of the Old Republic storyline or the Old Republic storyline. They might not even call it the Old Republic. I think that it's going to just take place years and years and years beforehand. Hopefully, you see like kind of the formation of the Jedi. How many years and, are we talking? I don't know. Maybe a thousand. Oh, maybe, wow. maybe maybe even two. I don't know. But it's it's a, enough to where you kind of see how the Jedi came to be. Like I think that that's what people have been missing, wanting, and who better to do it than Benny Alfred yeah. Weiss? And then they're going to also announce the directors. Uh, will it be one director? For the whole, is that trilogy? what you're hoping? Not necessarily, because I, see, but here's the thing: when it was J J and people were like, wait a minute, but that's not <clears> what you said. You wish J J Abrams would have done all three. Yeah, because J J Abrams was writing them also. So if Benioff and Weiss are writing them and producing them, if they brought in, if they're still writing, producing, and they're working with, because that's is what that they, true that they're writing all three? They're, I believe that's what they're doing. Yeah, that's writing and producing. From from what I. From what I gathered, I think they're probably writing with maybe maybe some other people, whoever they bring in. But either way, they're going to be heavily involved in it, the same way they are with Game of Thrones. So they've proven that they can work with multiple directors. And granted, it's television, but it's still epic television. So I'd be okay with it. Just depends on who, if it, if they can tell their vision and they have a through line. That's my biggest problem with this this new trilogy. This that there's there was never a plan. Mm -hmm. There will be a plan for this trilogy. Who do you want to be the director? If the, if there's one or if there's three, mm. Miguel Sapochnik that has worked with Benny and Weiss on all Battle of the Bastards, Battle mm. for Winterfell, he incredible so you'd TV be okay director. With the TV director, absolutely. But well, like I mean, the Russo brothers on TV, so yeah. yeah. I mean, it, I actually like to see the Russo brothers. You know, that would be interesting if 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 they did it. Um, I don't disagree. I mean, they've got they've got the chops. Yeah, I don't know. I uh, it's, and they're in the family. Do you see Iger? Uh, tweet somebody suggested the Russos for a Star Wars movie, yeah. and Iger made the would love to have clapping. them. Kind of thing. Well, yeah. The well, praying hands or clapping? Clapping. Sorry, clapping. I don't know why. So the Russo, the well, Russos cool were similar. The, it's, yeah, the yeah. Russos came in to promote Civil War when we were at the old studio, and they came in and, and I might have even asked them on air when Mark and I interviewed them for Schmoes, and they're like massive Star Wars fans. Um, they we I talked to both Anthony and Joe right afterwards, like for a bit. We were just bullshit about Star Wars and they were going to come on Jedi Council because they were such big fans but they were just slammed with with press for with Civil building War. Building the MCU. <laughs> with building the MCU. But um, but those guys after talking to them please they, they're they not they're not posers they know their stuff and I think they've proven proven, also, proven yeah. their worth. With, also with one done. of their uh, paintball episodes of Community was basically a remake of New Hope. Yeah. Mm. So they know their shit. Yeah. yeah, that was a great episode. Good call Cody. Yeah. Really well done. I mean if you and, and that's the other thing though too if you if you announced if you announced that Benioff and Weiss coming off of uh, <clears throat> Game of Thrones, right, we're, depending on how the last episode plays, right, if you announce them and then during and then doing their first movie, directing their first movie, the Russo brothers, people will lose their minds. Is there is so? Do you think then that episode nine? I mean, I, I could. Is this the end of the saga? Is this? Yeah, a, yeah, it's over? they're pretty much for for now. Now, I mean, Kathleen Kennedy. Hinted that it's possible. Was that a dolphin? Yeah. Um, yeah, the, yeah so, so Kathleen Kennedy had um, hinted that mm -hmm. you could spin off a lot of these characters, whether it's Ray or Finn or whoever down the line. And why wouldn't you if you could? Uh, but I don't think that's necessarily going to play into the saga. Like the, I don't think we're going to see an episode 10, 11, 12 anytime soon. Okay. Right on. And I don't really want it to be. I There's too you. many expectations on those, on those movies. Yeah. yeah. Ever, though? I still think they they might go back like ten years. Ten Depends. years from now, they'll go. Star Wars will be whatever this is, and then, boom, they announce. Depends it. on how it Agreed. ends. It depends on how Episode Nine ends because the thing is, do you necessarily need it to be a saga film? Because that's you can still go ten years into the future and not make it part of the saga film. Do you think sure. that they would ever make it part of the saga film and go before the prequels? Um, no, because no. I think the, all those stories have pretty much been told. Unless the only thing that I, w I still say this, I think that it would be a great television streaming plus series is if, it, if you did right before the events of Phantom Menace and you did a Palpatine origin story with uh, Plagueis and you show and you take those events from Darth Plagueis inside of the James Lucino novel yes. and you show his. It's a gangster story. I mean, you I should, love and, that and book. So it, much. it would be their version of like The Sopranos, and if they did that. 
um, for Disney Plus. That would be, it, would be, it would be really right great, there. man. The James Lucino book, Strong Darth Plagueis, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I don't necessarily need to see any more movies leading up to it because I think that the saga connects to the Skywalkers. I mean, hence, it's called Rise of the Skywalker. Rise right. of the Skywalker. So, so we'll see how it ends. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so 2022, I think that it also puts a, a kind of a thirst for mm-hmm. because if it ends well, if this if people are really excited about this movie, Rise of Skywalker, and it plays to a lot of the fans, that by the time 2022 rolls around, people are going to be ready to see a Star Wars movie in the theater. Yeah. I'm still feeling like we're in 2018. It's 2019. I have to keep reminding mm-hmm. myself. Like, anytime yeah. I'm doing yeah. the, the math, I've been I doing that thinking, a lot lately. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know why. Well, I mean, so that's <laughs> Christian's like, yeah, you dummies. I don't no, like no, <laughs> no. I, I, I can feel that. Yeah, because 2019, though, we are in 2019, and yes. Rise of Skywalker. Man. When it, when it, it that's that's why I'm, I'm, you're going to get so much cool shit this yeah. year. Mandalorian will drop. There's going to be another Star Wars series too that might not be the Mandalorian. That's like in, right. Announced in the next well, six well, Cass- to seven Cassian's months. already coming out. Yeah, you yeah. Cassian is, but but you're saying they have like a third. Yeah. Which if Mandalorian does really really well, which we believe it will. And and you announced like a, I don't think they're gonna announce. I never thought those Obi Wan rumors were true. Yeah. Um, but if they did, that would and you could get Ewan McGregor to do it, that series would pop. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Master Cipher I don't know what That's the voice was, good. but I liked it. Master. Yeah. yeah. Master Cipher Thank you, Cody. Yeah, I, I, Riley's, Master. Riley's, Riley's Master just very nice. That's like John Travolta being a. It's, it's Master Cipher Dias. Cipher Dias. <laughs> It's like two weirdos that followed into a, into a club. They're using the force. <laughs> Attack of the Clones was on TV this May the 4th weekend, yeah. you know? And I hadn't Ugh. seen that one in a while. And he's like, Master Siphontius has been... I'm like, oh, man. I saw someone put in, on that listing that I tweeted out. I saw someone put Attack of the Clones as like number one or Whoa. two or something. <laughs> I, don't, I don't... It was ridiculous. I it's, out, it's on the... It's the last spot. Yeah. Well, oh, no. I, sorry. I, second to last, the Clone Wars animated. Yeah, the Clone Wars animated last. is the, is the worst. Um, and then yeah, Clone Wars and then Phantom Menace. Those are the three. But I, it, it was so funny looking at all those lists. A lot of different. It's just the way Isn't that great? movie resonate. Yeah, it was. It is. That's I love that. that was the intent initially when I tweeted the thing out, just to see all the different lists. I just I tweeted out on this weekend. I hadn't seen Attack of the Clones in so long that I forgot that legitimately half the movie is Anakin and Natalie Portman on an island, just like hanging out in a meadow, just yeah. sitting, loving With sand. No, I mean yeah, the meadow. But they yeah. Some they, of the worst they keep going ever. right yeah. into the scene and they're love sitting it. there. Yes, and you like Attack of the Clones? Really? really? You don't know that? You're lying. You don't know that? No, I didn't know that. Do you, did you see it when you were young or something? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah. But also, I think that Hayden Christensen is like the best ever. Oh. And I love him. And I, I went on a, when really? Ken used to do uh, Jedi Alliance. Alliance, I went on and gave my top 20 reasons I love oh. uh, young Anakin okay. I like and that. Hayden. Oh, right. God. I'm well, such great. a fan. But you're, you're a fan, you're fan, you're fan of Hayden. You're not, not the writing of the film. I I thought it worked. I thought okay. it worked. I I don't like them as much as four, five, and six, but All right. I totally like the prequels. Hmm. And, and you're entitled to that opinion, totally, Roxy's trying hundred percent. Yeah, but yeah, they, I, now I you can them. leave. Now you can I, I <laughs> get out. <laughs> get out of here. She likes the prequels. Uh, yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> Come on. Come on. No, that, now I just went walking, Pacino. Walking, Pacino. Pacino. What? What? You like, like the prequels? <laughs> Anything else going on? And there's the. There was a tons of uh, so that was the main. Oh yeah, what's and and Dark Phoenix? That not Dark Phoenix. What's the other? Oh new yeah, mutants? the uh, New Mutants has been back moved again, right? Another year. <laughs> See that that <laughs> this movie. Just get rid of and it. And they get listen. They got rid of um. They got rid of Gambit. Pulled. Okay, done. Gambit's right. gone. Yeah. That's gonna be a TV series. That's and there were though. there was a number of Fox Marvel movies in development and th- that were dated and they were removed from the schedule. Okay. So the only thing Do you left... you know which ones? They're no, no, okay. they're untitled, so I don't know what they were developing. I'm, I've heard there was like the Kitty Pride movie. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it was the Doom movie that uh, they were developing. I don't know. Uh, but New Mutants moved and then, uh, yeah, it's another year. Where is that email? It's... Uh, it's it, it, Why, though? I mean, get rid of it. I don't understand. I think they spent a ton. But no. they that, spend a that, ton of money, and when, they have. But why not just dump it on onto like a, a dump it? That's the direct the streaming. Yeah. yeah, dump yeah. that somewhere because because the, the problem with star it, Daisy uh, Maisie Williams. I almost called her Daisy. Right? Yeah, but yeah. The, pro- the problem they, with, that they shot that movie like three years three ago. years ago. The problem with that yeah. movie though is that if they're going to put it out in 2020, when when are they going to introduce the X Men? into the MCU, right? Right. Because that's going to confuse people if it's that particular year. Does that tie in? It's just a throwaway movie. And if it's a throwaway God, movie, put it in the can. Just put it away. Yeah. 
Goosh. I bet this will change. It'll change again. Change to what? To nothing. You think you're never going to see the light I think of the day? I, mean, I wonder if they put it on streaming. And yeah. just yeah, dump it on there. Yeah. Well, Alex, what are you cracking up about out there? It was just so ominous, like, to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. <laughs> so oh, was, sad. It, was it Cody that was laughing? No, no that it was, was Alex. Alex. Oh. That was Alex. I'm just defending well, him. Yeah. yeah, but it was supposed to come out last summer. Then they moved it to this summer. And now four three twenty. All right. So, uh, all right. Question. <laughs> question around the around the booth. Uh, Alex, do we ever do we ever see? Does this thing ever see the light of day? Uh, I think it'll. I think it'll actually come out because uh, I think Dark Phoenix may give it a little bit of a push, and people might want to see it again. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Hmm. I don't, know. I don't I, think they're not putting it out because people don't want to see it. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think it's got a lot of problems. Yeah. Cody, what do you think? Uh, if I were them, I'd probably just put it to streaming. Yeah. To where, like, if no one watches it, no one will really know. Who gives a shit, right? Yeah. It doesn't streaming hurt the brand. Where? Yeah, I, Disney I, I, Plus. I, either Hulu or Disney Plus. I agree. Want. I think it, it, this has nothing to do with whether or not they, they think people want to watch it. It's, it's a matter of, it's probably a shit bomb, mm-hmm. and they don't know how to fix it, mm-hmm. and they don't want to hurt their brand. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I think you just put and it and on there's streaming. Like a, there's a pride situation in there, too, because they probably spend so much money that they're yeah. just like, yeah. there's no way. But it's a great point, too. If they're going to develop the mutants for the MCU, you don't want this out there. You don't want this like coming on no. the heels of maybe a, a Marvel movie ends and they post credit tease like Wolverine claws and then, but here's New Mutants. Yeah. But that's from the fo- it, it doesn't it, make sense. I dump it on Hulu. Disney. Only, see, another thing is it's not Fox anymore because right. like if it was Fox and Fox spent all this money on it and it's like and Fox was like okay look we uh, we don't have a lot of IP here we need to get this X Men and, and cross our fingers and hope it has profit. Disney's making money. Right now on Avengers Endgame, and they're piling up money. Take the hit. Mm. Don't damage your brand. Just take the hit. Bury it. If it stinks, if it's if it's a, if it's a good movie, and you think you can fix it, then then try. But if it's a good movie, why are they doing this? That's right. Yeah. And it, it, if it stinks, just bury it. Yeah. And and no one could ever see. And hopefully, it never sees the light of day. And there, I mean, the, maybe the reason they keep uh, uh, postponing it is because there's penalties with certain actors or penalties Maybe. with certain things. Mm. You know what I mean? That, there, there's all that like behind the scenes stuff. For me, it kind of reminds me that terrible series we've talked about it a couple times is that Inhumans that that came yeah. out on ABC that they thought, okay, this is going to be our TV tie-in. Like, right. This is where we're going to tie into some things. And then it came out. and That was when Ramsey was in, right? Yes. Yeah. And you've never seen a less enthusiastic, and that's putting it mildly, reaction to a Marvel property on t- television. No, I remember. It, it, it came and an went. Absolute. Oof. Train wreck Wolf. of a fart pile. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you hated it too. Yeah, I only Mouth saw duty. the pilot uh, and Wolf. Mm. It was Wolf. Yeah, it was real bad. Do, un, unrelated, but I'm totally. just looking at this article. I'm looking at the side. Curious from you guys. Do you care about the Met Gala at all? Did any of you guys follow? Ugh. I tweeted out, "What the no. f is the Met Gala?" Because <laughs> you never heard of it. I know. I know what it is. But how do they walk around in those dresses? Like, what is it? What do they do? Do they just walk down a carpet? They take pictures with like nine guys in umbrellas, and then they just go about their day. <laughs> Because that's what La- La- Lady Gaga was. She walked down in a dress that was like forty feet high by eighty feet long by a football field. Yeah. She had nine guys in umbrellas covering her. Then she oh, yeah. walked down to this big, like spinny flint. Look at this thing. And it's then, like fashion art. Okay. Then what, what do you do the rest of the night? How do you do stuff with that? Do you if you have to pee? What happens? Do you want to drink? What if somebody <laughs> steps on your dress? Do you sit somewhere? Look at this guy. How do you sit? This guy's like, falling, asleep hey! mid tw- he's falling asleep mid twirl. Yeah. Did you see Jared Leto's? What did he say? He he had his own head. Really? He had, he was wearing like a like a, a weird red oh, suit. Oh, I see it. And then yeah, that's not Photoshop. No, no. You guys don't think some of these are cool? Uh, I'm going to venture to say I, I don't want to say cool. I would say more uh, confusion. It's just, my whole night was yeah, just I don't confusion. Get it. Yeah, I don't yeah. get it. I don't care. And yeah. yeah, it always comes out. I'm always like, oh yeah. I mean, you're not talking to fashion gurus here, but like, no. you know. Yeah, okay. You know, so, just yeah. wondering. No. I know nothing of fashion. Yeah. So, there's a guy in the Star Wars shirt. Right. Yeah, I mean, I get, but here's the thing is fashion is one thing, and I guess like fashion art and, and the explosion of all this kind of stuff. But wh- wh- it, it, did somebody buy that? Just, or does it design it? Is no, she a mermaid? Like, uh-huh. well, how do you get around in a dress like that? How do you get into a car? It's a, yeah. The, is that a mermaid? A Kardashian on yeah. the left? Yeah. Uh, no, they were in feathers. It was those two sisters. Oh. If you look up Kylie and Kendall, uh, they were in like opposing feather bird outfits. Right, I mean, well. I know that Lady Gaga walks around like that on a Monday, but I'm t- uh, the uh, uh, like you look like Malfeasant over on the right there. All right, well let's let's stop talking about this. I'm okay, done with so. it. Let's let's we're gonna we're gonna move on when we get back from the break. Uh, that was bad radio. You're right. Yes, yeah, we have some other shit that we'll kind of get into and. Uh, 
let's probably some other news stories or some topics. I'd maybe take a phone calls now, and then David Dasmachin's coming in at eleven thirty. So we'll be right back. Glad you're alive. Hey, Collider fans, John Roca here. Look that behind me. There it is, Collider Sports. That's right, that is happening. We've got some great programming on there already. For those of you that have already watched, thanks so much. we got so much coming down the pike. We're talking about NFL. We're going to talk about NBA. There's plans about NHL. Golf is in the equation now. And, of course, the Premier League show with that I host with Jack Hind. That's been in motion for the last couple of weeks. And then an MMA show is on the way from Dennis Zhang, me, and Jay Williams. All those things are happening here at Collider. And look, we want to hear from you, so we want you to listen, we want you to watch if you're a sports fan. Even if you're not a sports fan, we might entertain you, teach you something new about a sport that you may not have known much about, or maybe so deep into it that you wanted to learn even more about it. We've got you covered. You can do that. Follow us on iTunes and on YouTube. You can there watch all the shows uh, or listen to all the shows that you want, and then leave us comments and rate uh, the shows as well and review them, and then let us know what other sports you want us to cover. Look, we're not touching rugby. I'll just tell you that right now. That's as far we out as we'll go. Uh, or cricket. But uh, maybe in the future, if we go Collider Worldwide, that's certainly a possibility. But for right now, Collider Sports is there for you. Take a look at it, take a watch, and let us know what you think. Oh, hi, guys. It's Perry here, and I am going to tell you about The Witching Hour. It is the show that I host along with Collider.com's Haley Fouch. It is in podcast form on the Collider Factory feed, and we also have the video up and running every Tuesday for you right there on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. We talk about everything horror. We're talking TV, movies, the newest releases. We talk about movies that are celebrating anniversaries. We've even talked about books. It's crazy. If it is scary, we are talking about it on The Witching Hour. We also have so many filmmaker interviews, really cool stuff. It's all coming your way every single Tuesday on The Witching Hour. Check it out. Collider Factory and the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. Ugh. Hello, Collider Live. My name is Amy Dallin. And I'm Corey Jondro, and we host a little show we love called Collider Heroes. And it is all of the things we love about movies, TV, comics themselves, all the breaking news, trailers, photos, but not paparazzi photos. <laughs> all of the superhero stuff we love, all of the indie comic stuff we love, all the stuff you had no idea was based on comics. 80 years of comic lore have led to this show and many years in film and TV, and we're living in a golden age of comics, and we want to share all of that zeal with you folks. So we talk about the stuff that's coming out, we talk about what we hope is coming out, we do fantasy casting of things that should exist, why don't they exist? And we do your Twitter questions asking directly to us what we think of certain things, and every single week, since we both actually love and read physical comics, buy and print, we have a comic pull list where our five biggest favorite books of the week come out, and we dive into those with you guys. You can buy digital, I'll forgive you, as long as you're paying for your comics, it's all good. But if you buy in print, you can bag them and board them, and then they're worth more later, because comics are like certain things from the 90s that are totally worth the value. Buy comics, <laughs> buy in print. Digital's never worth anything later. Buy in print, keep comic stores alive. Or we can debate collector's items all day long. We can debate casting, we can debate movie, movie news, we can have all of our friends come join us, as we frequently do. We can ask professionals about their work. We've had some amazing guests come by the show. Yep. We try and we to can catch it every Wednesday. That are on these properties that also love comics. You hear what it's like from their perspective, from inside, from outside. And this is all with the focus of bringing all this news to you guys. And we're here every Wednesday on Collider. And we love this stuff. We want to share it with you guys. We'll see you then. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. That's right, they gave Riley his own podcast. The Riley Roundtable is on its new home. It drops every Thursday. The Riley Roundtable is a little bit about everything. It's about movies and life, life and movies and everything in between. I like to have on special guests for discussions like Justice League versus Batman v Superman, for discussions about wine tasting, for discussions about UFOs, and everything in between. That's right, the Riley Roundtable drops on Thursdays on the one-on-one -on -one with Christian Harloff podcast feed, and later on Collider Video's own podcast video network. So check it out every Thursday, the Riley Roundtable. See you there. Hey, everyone. John Roca here, one of the hosts 
for Collider Sports Time. That's our new show there on the Collider Sports Network. It's our flagship show, just like Collider Movie Talk. We get on, talk about a bunch of sports issues of the day and what is burning up social media. What topics are burning up social media? That's what we do on Collider Sports Time. I'm joined by my top 10 co-host, Matt Nost. Me and him, we welcome a bevy of guests every week to talk about NFL the Major League Baseball playoffs, NHL, and the NBA, which is starting up soon. We're going to talk about that. We also get into UFC stuff, college football, all the stuff that's happening in the world of sports. We're going to cover it on Collider Sports Time. And we're going to take the time to break it all down and give our opinions and our unique takes and unfiltered thoughts on what we think about the sports news of the day. So don't forget to join us every week on Monday for the Collider Sports Time show on the Collider Sports Network. And don't forget to subscribe on the Collider Sports Network on YouTube and on the Collider Sports podcast feed. We're going to bring you all kinds of stuff. Hope to hear from you soon. When are you going to be going with this until it comes out, Cody? It's a big week, Chris. Okay. What were those first five words? He heard me. So <laughs> let me ask you, can I ask a question? I'm not, I'm not even going to ask you because... He clearly heard what I said. You gonna, you gonna, you gonna go? Is he gonna go with this gonna, until the rest of the go? week? It's Pokemon. <laughs> no, I, I, I have a question for about Pokemon. Yeah. What is it? So like, it was it a video game first? Was it a TV show? Was it a? F- it was both. Oh, it was. It was the video game. And it was the, the show. You had cards. It was a whole. What came out first? I had three thousand yeah, cards. What came cards. out first? I believe the game came out first, but I'm sure someone's already commenting yeah. saying, actually, the show came out first. It was like 99 okay. was when it blew up. Okay. In the States, yeah. It came yeah. out a few years before that. But yeah, Japan. 99 is when it caught up over here. Cause got I remember it, got it. I used and to watch. What is it about? What is it about? Got to catch them all. Yes, yeah. So that does nothing That's a longer conversation we need to have, Josh. <laughs> oh, okay. But, but that's all a right. problem. You can't explain what it's about. It's a different world where there's all these cool creatures. Uh-huh. You got to learn about you know, catching them and bonding and stuff like that. It's good. I mean, they kind of hmm. set that up in the new movie a little yeah. bit. Okay. Right on, right on. Is that, that's, did, that's part of it. Did you, Cody, play the uh, Pokemon Go? Uh, Yeah, for like the first few months, and then I Did you guys play? To suck. No. I, that was, again, that was like two years ago, and I I was... People I, are still doing it. Yeah, I was just so lost mm. by all... It, like, it just wasn't... It, it just was past me. It was my generation. Yeah, like, Because I remember being at... Uh, I actually remember being with the big man and Holly at it's at Comic Con, Comic-Con, oh sitting God. at this restaurant. What, he oh, played? I got some good no. Pokemon at Comic Con. No, he didn't yeah. play, but he and I were, were looking at all these people just looking at the ro- people getting hit by cars. We mm-hmm. didn't see that, but people were getting hit by cars playing, looking for Pokemon. But they also said that it was causing people to exercise, oh, was lose it? weight. Okay. Like there was supposedly like a ton of it blew up. Uh, that positive. Would be, I remember. That's a positive. And people traveling, they'd yeah. never traveled before. I never played it. Uh, but I suppose it was really good for well, the it, world, it, the, actually. The app blew up. What I assume happened was that, because it blew up, and then right as it blew up again, people like, put a movie into production. Mm-hmm. So they started working on a movie, because if you look at the timing of it. That was right when we were doing uh, Comic-Con HQ and Film HQ. It right. Was same, and then they announced, they announced the movie, and then the movie goes into production, and then it's about it's about right, it's about two years, and then here we are, the movie comes out. And I think, was it, do you know what it's tracking at? Um, I th- want to say I heard like a 50 or 60 million opening yeah, weekend. Well weekend. And you said it was good, yeah. Christian, right? I liked it. I, I didn't, again, there were a lot, there was a lot that went right over my head. Like when, like there's certain Pokemon that showed up and I knew that, oh, I guess that's something from the show or the app that, or I can't believe they used that because of whatever it was. But uh, yeah. I heard all these people kind of going, oh, and I'm like, I don't know what's happening. Right, right, but I enjoyed right. it and I thought it was, I thought it was cute. But I also, there's one particular scene that I'll just say that it, not to spoil it, I'll just say a mime there's a mime in uh, it. Okay. And it was Cody, the mime scene's hysterical. Yes, it's one of the best parts of the movie. It's mm-hmm. really funny. Are you Mimes gonna take your great. daughter or no? I, she wants to see it. So uh the answer is if we find some free time to do it. It's I'm this pres- weekend, Cody? Uh yep. Maybe I'll take my little yeah. niece and nephew to it. I'm actually gonna surprise my daughter with something pretty cool. Uh. Um so her favorite television show right now is um is Henry Danger. It's okay. on Nickelodeon. Mm-hmm. Do you know do you know what it is? Mm-hmm. So turned out well the funny thing is the lead star that reached out to me once to be on Schmoes back in the day. It, just, it never came to fruition. He was pr- promoting something. But then it turns out the guy who plays Captain Man on that show is a buddy of mine. He's a guy that I've known for a long time, and his wife is Do I know? Uh, Cooper Barnes. Mm-hmm. No, and, his, and his wife is um, Liz Stewart. I actually used to do stand up with. And she's I actually, know Liz Stewart. She's yeah. going to come on the show. Okay. Um, so, anyway, so and I had uh, Cooper on to, for a one on one, and we were talking. And, 
he's like, listen, if you ever want your daughter to come to the set, you know, just let me know. So I'm, I, I haven't told her yet, but I'm going to take her out of school um, in like two weeks. And I'm just we're not going to tell her where, where we're going. I'm just going to go to the set and she's going to meet all of Is the, it Disney? the cast. Is it Disney? Nickelodeon. No. Nickelodeon. She's going to flip she's gonna go out. Nuts. Coolest dad ever. She's going to go nuts. Yeah. yeah. Like she, because she, the other day, and I kind of soft, I kind of soft uh, threw it out there the other day. I was like, she was talking about her favorite show in the world is Henry Danger. And I'm like, what would you ever do if you met Henry Danger? She's like, I wouldn't be able to speak. I go, well, that's <laughs> definitely not true. But I, but I said, but, but the fact that you say that is pretty awesome. Yeah. Is she what second grade? She is first grade. First grade. Yeah. 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 So, fifteen. What is she? Sixteen. She's she's twenty three. She's twenty three. Um, you know, I made an announcement. Not made an announcement. I teased an announcement. That's if you're in the Collider Live Facebook group, I said found out something yesterday. Yeah. That is huge. Big time. Big for the show. Collider Gigantic. Live. Uh, Roxy doesn't even know about oh, it. Yet. It's huge, um, Roxy. Yeah. It's, is this facetious or real? No, it's 100%. Oh, it's, it's there's, the mountains. There's, there's 100%. And you say you want to tell me yet what it was? No, because uh, cause you don't even know what it is yet. No. Um, I know. Yeah. I know that I don't know. Do you have I a guess? No. Cool. Um, but I think it's a joke. It, it is not a, 100% not a joke. I just found out about it yesterday, and then uh, we are going to announce it on Monday. Are we, we going to do a live show? What do you mean? Like a, a oh, you mean that? Um, that, Maybe. That's, that's not the but announcement. That's an announcement. But on Monday of next week, I will announce what the big announcement is. And it's a big, are we all it's, getting raises? That has nothing to do with me. It's a it's a big it's a big announcement, and it's gonna ch- it's definitely gonna change a lot of what we do here, for sure. So on yeah. Monday, I'll make that announcement, and then uh, yeah, you guys can. Do we uh, still have a show? No, we still have a show. But people will. People are gonna. I'm very curious the reactions that it's gonna get from the fans. Mm. It's gonna be very interesting. Yes. And I have no idea. You have what no it idea is. what it is. No, I decided. Did you d- forget to tell me? No, we decided not to because I wanted yeah. this reaction. It's gonna be. Yeah, it's gonna be good. It's yeah. gonna be good. We, we like it. We like it. We we like it very much. No, we're not. I like it. Me and McCooks, we like yeah. it. It's very. It's very like. You're it's going nice. to like. Am I gonna very like nice. it? I think you're gonna. Yes, love it. I think you will like it very much. Yeah, I and I also it. think that Danish Kristen Hall, a big fan, he will he have might m- be. much more of a, a presence in some Is Dorina going to like it? Yeah. Yes, Dorina will like it very much. Is, oh, she Mark really... Riley going to like it? Yes. yes. Mark I... Fernandez? Well, it's his call, so yeah, yeah. I think he likes it. Yeah, it's, it was his decision it was for his all decision. this to happen. Is Cody going to like it? Yes. Uh, n- I think Cody will like it the least. Is Cody going to know what it is? Cody, do you know what it is? I think I do. Okay. And, you, and if it's the thing that we're talking about, do you like it or not like it? Yeah, I like the idea of it. Okay. Is Alex going to like it? I, I would let Alex go. That's the, I'm just the big announcement. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the announcement. So Alex won't be here anymore. Well, you spoiled no. it. You just got rid of it. <laughs> I think Alex Is the like rest it of the office going to like it? Uh, yes. Totally. Very much so. Are we moving to A? Are we moving into, out of the studio? No, Are we moving out of I'm the not studio? T- I'm not going to tell you what that's it is not, right that's now. That's not the big announcement. I'm not going to tell you what it is right now. Are we getting new mics? I'm not telling you what it is right now. Are they going to smell us? I'm not going to tell you what it is. We have chocolate in the freezer. It's, it's actually not in the freezer anymore. I took it out on the side. What are you talking I about? I want to, chocolate. So uh, I try to cut it. It's like cutting a rock. Where does oh, it come from? Where does chocolate come from? Same place that got the freaking gummy bears. Gummy bears. Those made my stomach hurt. Okay. You got to poop? No, no, I wish. Right. It's because you shouldn't eat. They're very high in sugar. Yeah, yeah I didn't realize, and I had like eight of them really quick. And I'm, that's why I'm so jacked up right yeah. now. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. Can Zac Efron come? <laughs> Can I come? To where? I don't know. What's happening? Where are we going? <laughs> Nowhere. I need you to relax. Are the fans gonna like I need it? You to calm I down. don't know. We don't know. I don't know if the fans are gonna like it. I think. Zoo. 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 There's actually did you no, see that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's actually artwork. Did you see the I artwork? I see the artwork. The I wouldn't exactly really call it artwork. I'd, I'd call it a uh, nightmare of a vision. You know what, uh, Alex? Done. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to blow that up into a poster and put that in here. I'd, I'd, uh, have, you, have you found that? Can we, can we make it like a smaller poster? No, like I, I wanna, we'll, put it, we'll put it over there where the, where the Black Panther is. Because okay. or, or, yeah, right. right. that, that is, uh, it's good. It's really good. <laughs> it's good. Join that Collider Live page, by the way, and... If you have not, please go and join the Movie Trivia Schmodown uh, Facebook page. There are like almost nineteen thousand people. I'd like to hit nineteen. Uh, shit, I'd like to hit twenty. So that's that's. Did any of you guys watch yeah. Chernobyl last night? No, HBO? I didn't. How oh, was did it, it debut last night? It debuted it last good? night. Okay, yes, it's amazing. Uh, the really? first episode was incredible. But th- my biggest issue, and it's a pretty big issue, is this takes place in Russia, right? Russia. They all have Russian names. They all have Russian. Last names, mm-hmm. 
None of them are speaking with a Russian accent oh, all, at all. That's, it's and they all have like different. Like Kevin Costner and well, Robin Hood. It's a real story, isn't it? It is. A, it's, is that it's, is, Chernobyl? Yeah, but that, I'm saying the show is based off of Chernobyl. Yes. yes. So is that the case with? It, the, it's all Russians. Oh. It's in a, in a communist but they're not, state. They're, they're not, not going to let outside. So you're not talking about the actor. The, the actors are all like going from like a British to a Scottish. Like they're all they are speaking in their normal voices. It is very because I want them to all like try the Russian accent. It's kind of like Tom Cruise and Valkyrie. Why do you he's think supposed they're doing to play? A, I don't know. It's Tom Cruise and Valkyrie. He's playing a Nazi soldier and he's just speaking like Tom Cruise. Right. Can you guys believe that no. of all of the people that have a, their own poster in here and have since the day the show started, JT. JTE has his own effing poster? Well, he in doesn't. Here. He didn't. He didn't have it since the beginning, though. No, since like week three or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's I, the, it's so well done. Obviously, I mean, it's HBO. It's this miniseries. It's the, the cast is great, but they're, they're none of them have Russian accents. None of them have a run. I, I thought when it started, I was like, oh, okay, so there's one British dude in here, and he, he might have been an outsider that had running it, and then everybody else See, now that's going to bother me. It's strange, yeah. 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 It's not that... It, yeah. yeah. What happened? Were you going to try go it? Yeah. 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 The Russian accent. I don't He's going to say it's not that hard, but then he got to but not. If, and... But if you got a, a, a vocal coach, it's, I mean, you yeah. lived next to Russians your whole, when you lived in that house. That was a very yeah. Russian neighborhood in that park, in Plummer Park. Yeah. Well, the, all the Russians in my neighborhood, yeah. Well, I'm going to check it. I do want to see it because I thought the trailer was amazing. Um, Riley, any, is there anything else going on news wise? I don't it? think he's, he's in there. He's not in here. He is. Hold on. No, no, I'm here. here. Uh, oh. Just the, the last bit of news is David S. Goyer is going to be doing the new Hellraiser remake. I care about that. Yeah, I figured. Yeah, who cares? Goyer Who's playing Pinhead? Is a lawyer. They're going to reimagine him. They're going to reimagine, they're gonna reimagine him. Uh, Pinhead and, and all the Cenobites. Yeah. We never talked about the fact that they 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 really they released that Sonic trailer and then everybody bitched about the uh, look and they're changing the look yeah. of the of Sonic. Yeah. I, I don't think the problem was the, the, the look. That's what I said. No. I yeah. also liked the trailer, so. Yeah, I don't think the you problem did. was the look. Yes, I think I did. The, the problem was the movie. I the, think. The, 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 it was looked terrible. I, I got to be honest. I, a lot of it to me is Jim Carrey. The Jim oh. Carrey, like the spoof of a spoof of a spoof it's like of a spoof. Like Inspector Gadget. Correct. Yeah. It's it's just the the this whole like meh <laughs> villain yeah. just doesn't work anymore. What's so different about the Sonic that that came out? The look. See, that that wasn't my concern. Was it that he was? I thought the Sonic looked cool. Everybody's like, he's got teeth. So did oh, we is that not, what it was? Yeah. Did, so did we not see teeth in the video game? I don't even remember. I don't do, know. Do, hedgehogs have teeth, don't they? Cody, do, do you hedgehogs have teeth? Do you, do you know think we're in an earthquake? No. Cody, do you know anything about this? Oh. Just uh, these tables are the worst. I people upset because the teeth, uh, the eyes were a lot smaller okay. and the legs were a lot longer. They tried to make him look like a human and it oh. just looked weird. They're okay. upset with the hair, too. I believe the hair was a thing as well. Yeah. Oh, well there you go. Thank you for your facts, Cody. Um, let's get some phone calls. That's we'll do that before we, before we get to um, 1130 here and have David Ellis watching. Of course hedgehogs have teeth. Hold on. Hedgehogs have six teeth. Okay, I, don't, I don't give a fuck about the hedgehogs anymore. Let's let's get to let's do, we're cool. gonna hashtag either Collider Live for some tweets and then we'll get some I'll look. phone calls about what I don't, the tweets. Okay, the tweets. Uh, All right, let's get a phone call. Hey, you're on Collider Live. Who do we got? Hey, how you doing, Saul? There he is. <laughs> What's up, Saul? What the, Saul, let me ask you a question. The fuck's yeah, going no. on today? What's going on? What are you doing? I was uh, I was making lunch. I didn't expect the early call window, so I, I'm a little screwed up on my time. Yeah, but you Sorry. did it. See, that's the thing with you. And this what are you having for lunch, though? Uh, uh, eggs and bacon. Okay, good. For lunch. But I love is... eggs and bacon. But this is why. I, but Saul, this is why I like you. You you call in. You're ready. You're, you you know it's 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 11:45. You're on it. It's 11:15. You pick up the phone. You get through. You make your fucking eggs eggs and bacon. He's and your you gold make the standard. Call. He really is. So. You're on the spot. Breakfast for what's, lunch kind what, of guy. What's, what's going on? What do you want to talk about? I got two things I can talk about. Two very different things. Hit it. Mm. I can do Star Wars or I can ask someone in studio a personal question. Personal. With, you go with the personal. We just talked about Star Wars for an hour and a half. <laughs> what's Star Wars? Uh-oh. You got it. I thought maybe you want me to co-sign that, but moving on. Here we go. Hey, Roxy, how you doing? <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> I'm okay, Saul, I think. How are you? I think she watched Inside Shemona. Well, oh. Hey, uh... Roxy, I, by the way, I just want to point this out. I haven't heard it mentioned on the show. I love the short film Crazy Bitch. I thought it was really fun. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That's you really nice of you. That's, he's but, he's buttering really, you up before he hits yeah, you. Yeah, I know you've got, you got to be hitting me with something bad right now. What do you so got, I'll Saul? That. Come on, Saul. What do you got? No, I'm just, I'm not going bad. I'm just, right. going, I'm going to go a little, little, a little, I'm not going surface here. I'm going to go a little deep. And All if right. you're uncomfortable with it, just shut me up and whatever. Let's okay. see what you got. I, so months ago, I watched a one on one with Christian. And it was, I'm, I'm, 
I really, you, it, it turned the page for you as a person, for me personally. Like I, I, I left that liking you a lot more than I already did. Thank you. And, um, but you, you relate a story in that um, about something that happened to you personally. And somebody took, in my opinion, great advantage of you. They took advantage of your heart and your compassion and all that. And, and they shouldn't have done that. And um, you, you wear it well and you, you champion on. And I'm, 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 I think that's amazing. But I'm curious. That's, oh, the fucking dog got the bacon. God damn it. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> fucking fucking dog. Son of a <laughs> get out! Get out! Get outside! <laughs> if I didn't, if I didn't, if I didn't love him before, yeah. the dog ate the bacon, and Cody, just that's, del- that's a sound clip. That does sound Cody, clear. you have to steal! <laughs> oh my show. god, the dog stole the bacon! You got it! You got to keep that oh, as a soundbite. It, it, it's a brand new pack. He got the whole fucking thing. <laughs> oh, that little bastard! <laughs> I love salsa. Go, so get, get away from me, Duke! Go, go over Duke. there. I'm here, you there. All right. Here you go. Uh, so, you Rod, I'm sorry, yeah, look, I'm sorry. About back that. on Rod, track, so. <laughs> so, I'm curious. That personal experience that you went through, <laughs> where someone took advantage of your heart like that, is that why you don't like Doctor Strange? Because you What's he talking about? What, what, what story is he talking about? Uh, there could be like 50. Which story are you talking about? Because I don't remember. She had she had a boyfriend who's got some issues, maybe some chemical issues. Oh, oh, Ooh. I remember that long story, the long one. The, I mean, and, yeah. And it's like I, I really, I connected with that story, but he's not. He wasn't always kind to you, and I don't think he, he has, I don't think he took. He wasn't a good guardian. The one you met when you were really young, on, on, when you were like thirteen, yeah, fourteen. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and do you see, like in Doctor Strange, he kind of did that. To Rachel McAdams, and maybe that's what's the problem with Doctor yeah, Strange. I got it. Saul, Doctor Phil, we're you, going full deep. Doctor Saul. I Dr. think. Saul. I Duke, think you're. Quit. I think you're overthinking it. Yeah. Uh, I don't like the movie because I don't like the character. Yeah. So b- possibly, but like usually, if I can connect to something, I like it more. You know, when you see yourself in right, a movie, so, right. like like a life you just itself. Don't like, you just don't or like the character. I just don't yeah. like him. But listen, Doctor Saul, I like it. You, uh, you're great, Saul. Good luck. I appreciate pump, the question. Go, go pump your dog's stomach. All right, so yeah, that, raw raw meat. If you took the whole pack, yeah, that's not that's good. not good. All right, Salt. Uh, Cody, I mean, are we? T- that, that's got to be one of the best sound bites of all time, right? That's one of my favorite moments ever. I mean, that was great. The, 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 because he was so he was so in the middle of this yeah. kind of like yeah. maneuver. I don't know if Dutch. Dutch. Oh, the dog got the face. He's a son of a bitch. Saul's the, great. Oh, he, Saul is. I mean, Saul is a gem. He is the best. You Where know? do you think he lives in New York? Has he said? I think he's told us. I just don't remember. Did he come he's to the live Island. show? Um, I don't. Be- if he did, it was before we were. It, it was January, so we. Oh, we were. We were on the air already. I don't. Uh, I don't remember. Maybe he'll come. Uh, we're going back, aren't we? We're going back August thirty first. It looks like we're. The tickets aren't on sale yet. Can I come? Uh, let's see who's in the event. Let's see who's in the event. You got a lot of shit going down. Houston, no, that's the next one. The next one is Houston, and that is May 18th, the SchmodownLive.com, Double Toasted, and uh, Founding Fathers. I posted that trailer today. Make sure you check that out. The, it's, it's, if you are even close, if you can make it, you should be there because never. We're Texas gonna be, isn't even that big of a state. It only takes you a full day to drive across. <laughs> takes forever, but, street. But I'm telling you, if you can get there and you've never seen a schmodown and you have a, a means to get to Houston, go get there. I don't know when we will ever be in a wrestling ring ever again. This is going. We're going to be in a freaking wrestling ring. Awesome. Imagine if we do pretty well. The line of it. But I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I just don't know when that's going to happen. I also <laughs> want to make sure that people want to see. It. I mean, right yeah. now, we, let's say three hundred people, sure. which, is, which is good. But we can we can get a lot more in there if you want to come see it. But three hundred people is good. Um, I think the lineup you have too might make for the best live show that we've had yet. It's. I mean, it's, I guy mean, versus Bateman in a main event, and then hashtag guy girl. I know you keep making that. You keep making that known. Uh, but I, I would tell you, you have, a, you have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with it. It's just, an, it's just interesting. Hmm. That's all I'm saying. I don't know what. I, I mean, you guys are clearly missing that the first live show with the Wildberries is the best one. But that's fine. That was good. And I think that I want to do that again. I got, really got to talk to to Nick Scarpino and Greg. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see if we can get. I'm not. I'm not. And this is what I will say. I am not doing a San Francisco event if I don't get Wildberries versus kind of funny. Yeah. And but I also want to make sure because those guys have. The market there, they yeah. know they know how to promote it, and I, I would if if they want to get on board and help us promote it, I'm down. Yeah, to do it. Um, but if uh, if not, it's just I don't know 
how big our fan base is in San Francisco. I so, uh, but I do want to do it. I think that maybe even like September, we're gonna and we're really heavily looking into Orlando for October mm. because um, we. So we did this thing, and this is another thing for you guys. Go over to please go and join that Facebook group and go vote for where you want. There's a f- whole forum where you can vote for what city you want us to come to. And right, Boston's pretty big. Well, you gotta though, Christian. Go to the cold places in the warm time and the warm places in the cold time. You're not doing this right. I mean, you know, listen. I also want to hit the markets that want us. Yeah, I know, but Boston Toronto in the summertime. That's what you it's need. It's hard to get to Toronto. Yeah. But Boston is something that we're th- considering. Toronto. Does, does everybody Atlanta. even have a passport? After Chicago, we shouldn't be doing much in cold places during cold times. I didn't mind New York in January, though. No, but I it didn't, didn't snow, it. and we didn't get locked into an airport. That's the issue that you that Chicago you into. travel stuff. Chicago look, all right, tough. they're wrapping us up here. Look, we got to go to uh, break. When we get back, we're going to have David Dalsmarchin back in studio talking about all creatures here below. He was a great, great guest the first time. I'm yeah. sure it'll be just as fantastic the second time around. We're excited to talk to him quite a lot. No, it's not late to the party. That's actually from Obi-Wan Kenobi. You didn't know that? Well, you should, and now you do. Jedi Council, what is it? It's about Star Wars, obviously. It's Jedi Council. Every week, the latest and greatest in Star Wars movie news, myself and Ken Knapsack. That's right, the pit boss himself. We have a guest on, and we talk about everything happening in the world of Star Wars. If it's the movie news, the TV news, canon news, comic books, games. And then we take questions from you guys on Facebook and Twitter. It's a lot of fun. We've been doing it for a couple of years now. I'm still excited talking about it. The fan base is coming together again. I believe it is. I think it is. I hope it is. And we're talking Star Wars, so we like you. That's right. Right. All of you, if you're not a fan of Star Wars, come on over and join us every Thursday for Collider Jedi Council here on Collider Video. And we have an Apple Podcast feed or Podcast One, wherever you want to go if you listen to podcasts. And not only do you get Collider Jedi Council every week on Thursday, The Rule of Two with Mark Fernandez and Mark Riley, that's on every week. I believe it drops on Wednesday. It's on one of these days. It's a good show. You should listen to it. I like it. I listen to it. I haven't listened to it once. Hey, guys. Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com. And if you're a pro wrestling fan, which... I hope you are. Even if it's in secret, then you should be checking out Wrestling Sheet Radio Weekly. Uh, We've got a bunch of shows in the podcast feed. We've got weekly recaps for myself and John Rocha, which you guys will probably know from the Collider family. Uh, That's for Raw. That's for SmackDown. We've also got the weekly roundup of wrestling news. It's a show I host called Wrestling Sheet Radio with Jamie Iovine and Elijah Bates. And we've also got a bunch of other stuff in our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. So check it out. Subscribe. And I hope you guys dig it. Hey guys, Perry here to remind you to tune in for Collider Movie Talk every single Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 4 p.m. PT live. We are live. We talk about movies. We answer your live Twitter questions. It's so much fun. We talk about everything from box office to all your favorite superhero movies. We talk about horror on a good day for me. And who knows, maybe even a spoonerism will happen. I don't know. That's what happens when you watch Collider 2 v mock right are you gonna watch you better watch go watch now what's up collider fans if you are a fan of television and you want to watch a guy that looks like me and a guy named thad williams talk about tv every single friday subscribe to the collider channel collider podcast is where you can find the video uh Colli- we have our own itunes feed hashtag at collider tv talk you can find on itunes or wherever you find your podcast and you listen to them and your ear holes that's where collider tv talk comes at you we talk about tv news we talk about shows we love shows that we don't love and most importantly we don't read any books because tv has nothing to do with reading we also have a show called hypothetical questions with myself and roxy stryer and all kinds of reviews right here at the collider podcast channel and the collider tv talk feed subscribe rate like tell your friends tell all your friends to tell their friends and before you know it it's a pyramid scheme of television i'm josh mccuga you can see thad williams and myself along with roxy stryer and all the collider personalities all the time right here on collider tv talk as always put down the book pick up the remote Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. Rule of Two is a Star Wars podcast hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. 
It drops on the Jedi Council podcast feed every Tuesday. You like Star Wars? Good. I like Star Wars. And you know what we do? We talk Star Wars. And not only talking Star Wars, we celebrate Star Wars. We gave the Golden Lightsabers the best in Star Wars, best picture, best opening theme, best crawl, and all that good stuff. We celebrate the games of Star Wars. We do everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of debate and a lot of discussion thrown in the middle. So make sure you check out Rule of Two every Tuesday on the Collider Jedi Council podcast feed on iTunes and later on Collider Video. That's Rule of Two with Riley and Mark Fernandez every Tuesday. And may the force be with you. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, live here on Collider Live. It is the Tuesday show, and man, are we excited here because one of we started the show in August of last year, and we all talked about it. Like one one of our favorite guests that came in, just kind of he, he he was shooting the shit with us. He was just having a good time. Fans love them, we love them, and he's back again. David Dusmalchin is back. Hello, David. How are you? Well, hello everybody. Thank you. That was oh gosh, the clapping doesn't <laughs> stop. This is yeah. amazing. No, it's <laughs> our live audience. I'm gonna get that app, and I'm just gonna, anytime I walk into a Starbucks, I'm gonna hit that That's right. for the applause. And then you can bring it to the Game of Thrones set. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, are you a big Game of Thrones guy? Huge. Yeah. And uh, wow, yes. I'm. Uh, last week was an intense week for yeah, me yeah. because I felt like I was. I saw. Was it? Last, this is last week. Watching Endgame, right. and then seeing the battle and yeah. uh, all this stuff happening in one. Week was almost emotionally, psychologically a little too much. Had to go to my Mm. therapist and talk through some things. (laughs) Um, Having a lot of opinions, a lot of feelings, but I'm... um I'm really enjoy- I'm enjoying yeah. the ride. I'm trying my best to just like comfort food my way through right. each episode, yeah. and my wife and I sit and hold hands, and you know, it's great. Now, I know you obviously you're part of the family uh, in Marvel, so Endgame, you, you you liking the way it wrapped up or what? Oh man, you loved yeah. the way it wrapped up. I loved the experience again, though it was too. So we because we're part of the family. Marvel's so awesome, and they've always been so kind to us. You know, I I, I I'm a sidekick of a gang of sidekicks to mm-hmm. one of their superheroes, but yet they always make my wife and I feel really included and they bring us to these fun events and we we get to celebrate with them. And uh, so when we got invited to go to the premiere of Endgame, we were so excited and we were like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so intense. And we have so many friends who, you know, this people that we love who made this film. And we watched the movie, it was over. And then all of a sudden you're expected to go right into, and I don't know how this anybody does it, but go right into these parties they have like right. you know it's, yeah, a, yeah. it's, a, it's the yeah. premiere party and it's awesome it's fun they're celebrating it's loud but that movie in particular was so like it took so much it was crazy yeah. out of you mm-hmm. to like it, to, for the experience that like my wife and i were at the party for a few minutes and we we're like i think we need to just go <laughs> we need to go into like a quiet place yeah. with a when weighted we, blanket and we, we yeah. were at the the screening we both of us walked out and we didn't say anything to each other it was three of us and walking back to the car we finally got in the car and it was like this long sigh of like we gotta watch that again. Yeah, yeah. This was just, it was, it yeah. was an it was emotional, lot. emotional yep. journey. Because I did the same thing you did, because Perry made me feel bad about it. I went to the party, I did one lap out. Yeah. Because I was mentally drained. You can't, uh, and, and to be like on or be yeah. social after yeah. something like that, and you've just watched blank, blank, blank. I'm, they're still, we're still trying to yeah. protect spoilers. Yeah. I know that everybody and their aunt, uncle, and grandma has seen the movie at this point, but still, there's somebody listening right now right. who's going to be like, Dave Desmond. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you thought it was going to do well, but you, are you surprised with how well in the box office this movie is doing? I, I mean, I, I don't say surprised anymore, only because they just, they continue to blow the lid off of every record, everything, but yes, I mean, like, Within within a matter of 12 or 24 hours when reports started coming in, you're like, they've already achieved what? Right. With mm-hmm. this, it's, it's, and it's great because you guys, I, I'm sure, talk about, and I know that you hear this all the time from, from, from people, and I do, um, especially people who are in film and maybe aren't uh, as big of fans as genre stuff, like this whole illusionary myth of hero fatigue you know right. what there is 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 I think um, sameness fatigue, yeah. and Marvel uh, isn't doing the same thing. They keep making new movies and they keep you know uh, reinventing the wheel with each new major step that they take. So to me, this is just more proof positive that there is no such freaking thing as superhero fatigue. Right? Uh, there's an in, there's a bad there's bad movie fatigue. There's ba- exactly yeah. or or watching this. We don't want to see the same thing. Right? We're just throwing a new costume on somebody. 
and and putting them through the same you know right. plot points isn't interesting yeah. anymore. And that plot was fascinating mm-hmm. to me. I thought it was so. It unique. was good. Now I know you can't. I know you can't talk about your role in the Suicide Squad, and, and we're not going to ask you to try to give up any uh, information and stuff like that. That's the, the, But I, you know, with James Gunn directing, and you know, you guys are close. Can are you? Can you even talk about how he brought, he talked to you about coming aboard? You can't talk about any of that stuff. I, 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 I don't know which movie are you talking about. <laughs> oh, okay, fair did, did you right. see the first one? Just curious as a fan. Oh yeah, I, 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 I'm a huge. Here's the funny thing for me as a kid uh, growing up, comic book fan since I was in the third grade. My first comic I ever bought was an Avengers okay. um, on a spinning rack at a Seven Eleven in Kansas City, and mm-hmm. that led me mm-hmm. into. The go finally going into the comic shop at the mall that my dad used to go to the Montgomery Wards to buy his hardware supplies at. <laughs> and uh, I uh, was obsessed as a kid with the Marvel heroes, mm-hmm. but the DC villains were always my favorite. Yeah, and I, so I used to mash yeah. up my own like imaginary adventures and I played Marvel superheroes and I would try and, cause you could create your own characters. It was a role playing game back Don't in the day. Don't give Bob Iger any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to say with Suicide Squad, what was so cool to me and the idea that I love so much is is bringing so many villains together to, to go on crazy adventures. And um, I – so, yeah, I I, 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 uh, I thought, you know, oh, my God, this is going to be so awesome. And now, you know, obviously that, that franchise has just found – one of the great, I mean, one of the greatest filmmakers of our time is yeah. going to bring the next chapter of this of this story to life, and I can't wait to see what he does. He's a genius. You've been on the show twice now, both times very uh, original pieces of clothing that you come in wearing, which is oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and today and, uh, shirtless. Sh- for those li- <laughs> oh, hey, everybody, I'm not. <laughs> Poke it up, man. Yeah. I mean, listen. It is. You know? Look at that. This is, um, there's That's keys, cool. there's a scarab, yeah. there's um, a yeah. sun. I am a... Uh, where, where do you get a shirt like that? So, hey, H&M, are you listening? <laughs> uh, looking for sponsorship. I I was taking, my, this is a true story. I was taking my, um, my, my son and daughter uh, to H&M to buy clothes mm-hmm. the other day at the mall, and... Uh, and I all of a sudden it hit me. I was like, "Oh my gosh, I'm getting ready to do press for all creatures here below. Yeah. I need to get some actual stuff that doesn't just look like." Because I have lots of like, I could, today I would have, I should have worn. I just have lots of graphic t-shirts, like right. Star Wars t-shirts and stuff like that. But like, I was like, I want to look cool. I want to look like yeah. I know what I'm doing. And I'm also like real cheap. And they had these like really <laughs> cool shirts that were like, you know, H&M nineteen dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. like, oh man. Well, you, know. you mentioned, and that's what, that is why you're here today. All creatures here below. The movie comes out. It's in theaters and digital May seventeenth. Yes. And you wrote this movie. I did. Um, and this what's funny about this, and I think this this is a big this is a big compliment to you to Roxanne talking about. I think the work can be described as bonkers in yeah. a great in a great way. This movie is a wild child. Yeah. I have to know from you where because not only did you start it, not only was it a completely different role than I've ever seen you play, but you wrote it. And I I'm curious where this came from your brain. How did sure. this incept? Like anything that I've I've ever written that's that's gotten to get to be made. Yeah. Um, it's it, it, it was something I lived with for years. I always had this plot idea about this and I think that was inspired by, you know, writers that I love like John Steinbeck and it was definitely inspired by movies that I love like Badlands and Raising Arizona. And then, um, you know, to get serious for a second, uh, I grew up where these characters are from and there was a, a, about six years ago kind of an event in my family where one of the members of my family came out to all of us and said, look, this thing happened when we were kids. And all of us were like, oh, my God, that is like a really horrible thing that is dark and deals with abuse that we all realized we'd all been kind of collectively keeping in this cellar in our family home, you know, and we and it got when it got unleashed, it was like bigger and more scary and more horrifying than any monster you've seen in any film. Just like what that can do to people. And, and how so, old were you when you, you don't have to tell us what it was, but how old were you? From my it, childhood. Yeah, so yeah. this is stuff that's 30 years okay. in the ground. I mean, okay. 35 years in the so ground. Shaped, like, since I was a little you, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. totally shaped me, but yeah. without me being conscious of how much it had. Sure. And we wouldn't ever talk about this stuff. So I think that was the last, because then I was like, because I had this idea and this plot and I always thought, oh, I love this idea of these two people trying to do something uh, the same time, you know, fatalistically, and then they have to go on the run, and which is what happens in the film. This couple, they, you know, the woman really wants a baby, the man really wants some financial security. Right. They both, in one night, take the things that they've never been able to have, which is financial security and a, and a baby, 
And boy, was that a bad call. Yeah. And uh, next thing you know, they got to head back home where they're from and they've been hiding from this truth for so long. So it was weird. I was promoting a film that I had made uh, called Animals, um, which was a very personal story. And, and I had sat down on a plane with my wife on one side and my dear friend Colin Shifley, who directed All Creatures. And I opened my laptop and I opened Final Draft and I just started typing and I typed for the next two days. And that's... That's what came out. Yeah. And then well, you you mentioned the woman in this. We also were talking about Endgame. How do you get Karen Gillan then involved yeah. in this project? Because there's, she's a huge name right now. There is there is this. You know, yes, I work very hard, and I believe I uh, I have a a talent for whatever you want to whatever that means for like acting storytelling. I I do I love what I do so much, but there is an element of luck that you cannot discount. And I've had so many freaking amazing lucky moments happen in my career as I've pursued this dream, one of which being that um, when we did get uh, a, 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 a group of people that were willing to put the money into helping make a film like this, which is a very challenging film <laughs> to get financed because right. it's not commercial in any you know respect whatsoever, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a... It's a very unique film. Yeah. And the cheaper movies are, are, are the harder ones to get to get made, man. The smaller movies, yes. yeah, they're harder, and way so, harder. And so, one of the things that the 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 the, the finance financier said, oh, "Look, I want to help you make this movie. I believe in this movie. This movie knocked me over, but I do want a chance at trying to get like a a more name actor attached to the film." And I was like, yeah, "Go with God. Good luck, because who's gonna you know come to play with us for no money and blah blah." Karen is agent I think gave her the script she read it and the next day she came over to we had a little production office that we were trying to get things going with and she was just like I I I I really want to be in this film. Oh wow! So I she love this script. So you didn't? Did you know her? I did not. I never met her, Karen really? before. And the wow. crazy oh, thing wow. is, that's crazy. She is has worked with and is close friends with some of my closest friends. Yeah. So I've been I've been a fan of Karen Gillan for years at this point. I've also heard wonderful stories about her so you know immediately i didn't have there was no vetting to do because it was like she wants to be in the movie and she's caring and she's that talented and i've already heard what an incredible human she is to be around um so then we just had to confirm with her and just like, you do you understand we're gonna make no money right. <laughs> and uh <laughs> where it's gonna be kansas in august when it's 100 degrees and we don't have you know fancy trailers we don't have hotel you know it's gonna be a bare bones and she was like i'm in i want to do yeah. this and she brought yeah. it and for for anybody who's listening we you know i i know there's got to be there's millions of karen gillen fans in the world and everything from amy pond to what she did in oculus and yep. then you started seeing her in things like jumanji uh, jumanji incredible her nebula in endgame is the heart and soul of this movie it yeah. is a thousand percent and here's the thing too because and it's funny because katie sackoff is also a friend and she and they were in oculus together yes. and that was the first time i'd seen her i thought she was great in that movie and truth be told, and I've said it on, on the show, I didn't love Nebula in a lot of the movies. I loved her in Endgame. Love, I love. thought I thought what she did as an actress in that film, what the character did in general, it won me over on the character. Not, right. not the actress, but the a character like that. Right. And it's obviously because of her performance. But you get an actress like that. You get a talent like that. And then you heard great things about it. And it obviously transferred over when you actually got to work with her. Oh, man. It was incredible. It was incredible. Yeah. And 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 I'll say, too, yeah, I think Nebula is one of the hardest characters to like in the Guardians and the Avengers world because she is such a pain in the ass. Yeah. You know? And she's... <laughs> so obstinate and she's so emotionless at times so when karen allows those things to creep through in her performing under all those prosthetics all that makeup so now we transfer to an indie film like ours where i needed we needed someone to authentically represent someone from my part of the country the midwest uh, a very specific type of person from that part of the country uh she does that flawlessly and then what 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 is so wonderful about Karen she creates this character in this film that is so loving is so innocent is so childlike and she's just got this you know I, she she's she simple. wants to love something so bad but there's a glint in her eye that's real freaking scary too there's like a danger in there that she just little fire she lets out and when you're on set with her you're praying like I know the camera's catching this god I pray that cuz what is she's doing right now is so yeah mind-boggling and i learned i i learned a lot uh working with karen gillen too because she's like my favorite actors the, my favorite actors i've worked with are the ones that are so did you see endgame man that was so crazy and do you remember when did it, are you oh okay and they just right into it yeah and yeah. You, you sit there like spellbound because for me sometimes you know i have to really right. like, get psyched up 
Were you guys yeah. doing that on set where you were nerding out about Nebula? And... About everything. Totally. Yeah. She's, she's, yeah, we would, and, and also we, we, we talked some about that stuff and she, um, was getting ready at that point to go do, um, more Avengers filming. They filmed that over the course of so much time. So she was on a break when we shot creatures. Um, we did. We talked about that. And, and How long and did it take? What was the shooting? Three weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah, we shot the movie in three weeks in Kansas City, Damn. my hometown. Um, and uh, the extras, the background actors, there's my stepmom. There's yeah, a guy I cool. did community theater with. This is. I love this story. Uh, I hope everyone will appreciate this. I'll make it quick. But so growing up, <laughs> I, growing up in Kansas City, my... Uh, Friday nights were devoted to uh, watching Cremation Mortem's Creature Feature. So that's how I got introduced to a lot of my favorite actors in horror movies and, and, and genre stuff. In the day, you know, it was all, how do I get enough money to get to go back to Clint's comics on Saturday so I can get more comics? And then as I got into high school and acting was something that I really, really started to think about more than just a passing phase. Um, I had a great drama teacher who ran our rep theater and I had a great speech coach and the speech coach, Kathy, um, she was Kathy McNamara when I was in high school. Now she's Kathy Wood. She, she was like giving me Eric Bogosian scripts and, 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 and Peter Schaffer scripts and, and, and blowing, I was reading things, you know, and, and t turning me on to films, uh, you know, that, took it to the next level stuff that I just hadn't been exposed to yet, you know, and, uh, deer hunters and all these That's amazing right. films. So I was a senior in high school and she said to me, you know, I know you're on your way to probably play football in college and you're probably, I know you talked about, you want to be an English major and be a, a just gonna, I was thinking I'd be a, a drama teacher and football coach. That was my kind of career path. And she was like, I think if you want to go for it, feel like you've got what it takes to be an actor. And hearing that from a teacher saying that to you changes, it changed my life. My yeah. paradigm shifted because I was like, really? Like the ones, like the ones, yeah. Isn't it crazy? So, it's one person one believing you. And, then that's... and it did. And and so she's retired now and lives in Kansas City and she is in oh, my cool. movie. Oh, and we had cool. this great night together in this crappy motel in Kansas City. She plays a, a woman oh. who won't let me check into this motel. And she's a stickler. In, she's a stickler for the rules. <laughs> And we're sitting back, like chilling out after we shot a scene in the. It's a real operating motel yeah. that was a little, you know, interesting. And um, <laughs> and we're in the back room, which looks like it had been art directed. I mean, it was crazy VCRs everywhere and like yeah. this weird um, uh, uh, security monitor system. Oh, and man. and I'm talking to her and we're laughing. And all of a sudden, the manager who'd been sitting there the whole time, not saying a word of the, of the hotel, he was just kind of like, "What are these people doing in my motel?" Well, they gave me cash. Okay, they're in my motel. Uh, right. He goes to move something that was making noise <laughs> and a Colt 45 falls like yeah, from wow. above it. like his hiding place of his handguns popped out and I was like hey Kathy you never thought this we'd be on set together watching real handguns fall on our heads huh uh, well oh that's gosh. amazing yeah what, what a cool conversation that might have been uh, though too when you when you call her when you call Kathy up the, well, had you, when was the last time you had spoken to her before that we do st we stay in touch oh, through cool. like uh, email Facebook as much okay. as we can but it had been a while and right. so when I was like would you be would you be interested in coming in you know being in my movie and she was like are you real for real because because she acted with me once when my senior year of high school our drama teacher mr swayze put on west patrick side swayze Sp patrick sure? swayze <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> what a shame too soon oh, i know that guy man yeah. um no mark swayze whose son's name was patrick that's which awesome. is funny uh, God, this is a this boring story for everybody. No. Who also was my stepdad for a minute. You, I don't think you have it in you to tell a boring story. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Thank you, thank you. She was your stepdad. So my drama teacher, his ex-wife, at one point married my dad, and I wasn't speaking to my dad at that point. So my drama teacher, who I thought was the coolest guy, uh, was was not my stepdad, but his kids were my step brothers. Does that make sense? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But for only like I think that marriage lasted like a year. Or two. Right. <laughs> but but he, one of his son's name was. Pat, Patrick, okay. and imagine your name's yeah. Patrick Swayze. Mm. So that's one. So, so, so you so, think he'd be bigger? So Mr. Swayze was... Mr. Swayze just, directed West Side Story my senior year yeah. of high school. I played Riff, and in the play, mm -hmm. if people are familiar with it, mm -hmm. the gangs all hang out at this malt shop uh, called Docs, which is generally played by an you know an old man. Oh, you kids, come on. Eh, let's make peace. Let's get along with the... Yep. And so we changed the character's name to Ma, and Kathy played oh, Ma... Uh, when we did it, I mean, she's a real, I mean, she's an actor. She does all the theater around Kansas City and stuff. So I'd seen her perform. She's amazing. Um, but we had performed once because, because Riff and Doc slash Ma yeah. have some intense confrontations, especially when the shit goes down yeah. and the fights <laughs> start. Um, so then when I got to be like, do you want to 
I want to I want to work together again. And she came out for the night. Um, it was a dream, you guys. Yeah. It was a dream. It was it was one of many that happened on this film. Shooting back home where I grew up, where a lot of the stuff that inspired this film took place, dr- driving through very haunted uh, places from mm-hmm. my past. And there's yeah. you know there's there's stuff in this film that is. Um, I don't want to give away too much because it makes the viewing experience more interesting, I think, if you don't see certain things coming. Mm -hmm. But needless to say, these characters have suffered a lot. You mentioned John Steinbeck. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it kind of had some Of Mice and Men kind of vibes. Without a doubt. I think that that's one of, I mean, it's one of the greatest American stories ever told, in my opinion. It says so much about uh, the American dream, the culture of America, the way that our society plays out, um, masculinity. And, I, and all that I wanted to bring a new idea to with this film. And I think there's something hopefully interesting when people watch because my character Jensen has built this very intense kind of uh, persona around his, his, his masculinity and strength and a kind of attitude that he has, which a lot of men have. And I wanted to, the audience, as soon as the film starts to really be like, oh, that guy's trouble. <laughs> that is where trouble is coming from. And here's this little innocent, but much more Lenny, you know, yeah. uh, Karen, who plays Ruby, and uh, and and maybe there's more danger lying within Ruby than there is ever within this guy. Were you concerned sharing this story with the world at all? Because yeah. not because of the acting side of it, but because it's it's yours. You wrote it. Very much. It, it's still right now is a hard time for me, you guys, and it's great to be in a room like this with people who like to talk about movies and we're having fun because you're also very supportive and it's like I know I'm in a safe place, but. We're putting something out right now that is intensely personal and is also something I care very deeply about, but is also an incredibly like divisive story Mm -hmm. and is not an easy watch. So the 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 criticism is hard, uh, but it's a part of my I chose this path. So I accept that. But the other thing that's really hard is that there's personal elements to the story that uh, were inspired by things that directly affected people in my closest circle, being my family, my tribe. So it's like making sure that I'm very protective of everybody's privacy and making sure that I would never go out to talk to do an interview and be like, well, this particular person and this particular person. Based from, off of this. But right, yeah, right, right. Um, and making sure that they and I needed to. It was really hard because I had to like express and and reach out to to peop, some people who I talk to all the time in my family and some people I haven't talked to in a long time in my family and be like, this thing's gonna come out and it deals with some of these issues and I want you to be aware that you don't just happen to go check it out and and then get bowled over by it and some people have chosen not to and some people have, but everyone's been pretty supportive well that's what I was going to ask so how's the majority of the response has been pretty supportive very supportive say? yes yeah, and my good. family's awesome they're very they're very supportive um, I think that uh, you know of course my mother would prefer for me to do uh, this maybe something nice David can you ever just do something nice <laughs> no, she loves Ant-Man actually she right. loves those because <laughs> Boy, those are like the lightest, most family friendly thing I think. But that's I've why you do done. those because you do those, so you can then do movies like your this passion. because that's what your passion is about. And they right? feed each other, yeah, you guys. Right. What's so cool is like you can look at it like those are two films of cinema that are at odds with each other. I look at like the indie art house film movement. It, it needs the support of the bigger uh, totally. artists when possible because it helps us so much. So like with all creatures. How, th- for anyone who sees this film, and I hope you guys watch it, you'll see that there is a, a, a baby in almost all of the whole film. Mm-hmm. Right. How with no money? Yeah. Do you have a baby in all? It's the same I, thing we I said. I literally turned to Josh right before we started. I said, I don't know how they did that. How did you do that? So you, you, we, we cast stole a baby. twins. <laughs> we, <laughs> <laughs> I was on the run from LA. I grabbed right. a baby. Uh, to re- it's actually reality. It's yeah. not we, even descriptive. We got this wonderful, there was a wonderful family in Kansas City who came into a casting. They had twin girls who were the age that we needed uh, the baby to be. So then you could only use a baby that young for, I want to say, half an hour a day. Mm. But since there was twins, you could do a half an hour with one, half an hour with the other. The uh-huh. Director plotted out all of the shots in a way that he knew when he really wanted to make sure we show the face or the the moving body. Then, while we were prepping, and it took so long to prep this movie because again, with a very small budget, you have to do so much yourself. So while I was shooting Ant Man and the Wasp, I went no, maybe even ah, was it Ant Man? No. Anyway, I was shooting in Atlanta. Russell Bobbitt, who is the Marvel master of props like he's the guy who is the 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 guy that has created so many of the most iconic props what in Marvel and he was so he's so uh 
this is a cool little detail of the kind of people that work for Marvel. Like, yes, the guy makes Cap's shield or Thor's hammer, whatever his, you know, all these things he's helped to bring to life. And yet Kurt's ring or Kurt's glasses, he is just as involved in that conversation. Cool. And I That's love cool. that. So when he wanted to show me glasses options for Kurt and he had these gunners that he thought would be the right thing for my character, but he had a wall as big as, as this one here and we spent so long and I was like, wow, this is so cool. But anyway, so Russell, I said, do you have any advice? How do you do this? You know, and he goes, I got something for you guys. So as a, as be, because we're friends and because we work together as a gift, which would have cost us uh, probably the budget of our film, he let us borrow um, one of the best, most lifelike baby props that's probably oh, wow. ever been used. Sure. And it was the same baby that they call Carlos because he was in, they used it in a The Hangover. Hangover. Yep. That's wow. awesome. That yep. That's cool. great. He looks like a Carlos. <laughs> yeah, that's great. There was a, another person in your movie that I was shocked when she popped up. I couldn't believe Jennifer Morrison. Oh, man, yeah. And she's there and then she's got, how did you guys get involved with her? She's so, a huge star. Huge star and so talented and such an interesting choice for Penny, the character, the waitress that had this interaction with Ruby, particularly. She interacts with both of us, but she really has an important scene with Karen where she gives some advice and, and gets, you know, she's kind of our audience for that moment. She's the one when you sink into the movie, she's kind of the the conscience of people who are watching the film. You're concerned for this person and you want her to know that, like, no, you don't give a newborn half and half. You have to get powder right, or whatever. Right. So, so this is so weird, you guys. Um, they, I didn't know who was going to be playing Penny. I knew that they had um, reached out to um, Jennifer, but I was like, oh, she's probably not going to come in and, and do this. And then Jennifer, same thing, read the script, loved the project. She does a lot of her own independent films. She's a big supporter of, pro of projects, art house and, and indie films. So she said, and the crazy thing is, maybe an hour before that uh, I got that news. I was on set. We'd already started shooting. I was doing a scene with Karen and Karen was preparing to make her own uh, indie film debut that she had written and was directing and was going to star in called The Party's Just Beginning. So she was also asking me some advice about things with making your own project. And she said, and you know, my friend, da, da, da. she was telling me this story about her friend, her friend that did this and did that. It turned out the friend she was talking about was Jennifer Morrison. And Karen didn't even know that Jennifer uh, had been offered a, or was, was being oh, invited wow. to see if she'd come play. So we were like, that's a sign. And yeah. it was cool because they're old friends, Karen and uh, Jen Jennifer. Are friends. Doesn't, cool. doesn't that, wow. that see, and I go back to the fact that obviously anytime there's criticism, you, you hope that it's the good criticism and it's criticism you can learn from and that. But that aside, you, you both, you, Karen and Jennifer who both read your script. And you think initially, they're not going to do it. And they want to do it because it's a well-written script. That's got to make you feel amazing. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. And it makes me feel if it makes me feel really good that anybody would go, like a financier would come and go, here's some money to help bring this story to life. That, that I've been able to get some things that I've written actually produced is um, – that I do any of this shit <laughs> is insane. That right. I'm sitting here with you guys and we're talking about, like, that I'm leaving in a few days to go be on another Denis Villeneuve set. That I'm going to work on Dune. Yeah. That I make movies that Karen Gillan will, will start. Like, anytime anybody, like I say to my wife, you ever think you're going to pinch me and make me up from this shit, don't, don't do it. Right. Please, Please don't do it. Yeah, It's oh. too good. It's what? surreal. I I Thank goodness he mentioned Dune, though, because Be Mark, Mark Riley was screaming. Would, I'm sure he texted me yeah. eight times to do it about ask about Dune because... <laughs> Because Dune... That's a good impression. Uh, he, he's going to be screaming about Dune. Uh, he was I, like that when I forgot to flush the toilet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's usually what tough. he does. Yeah. Right. It was Cody, you? you? Yeah, Cody, you no, know... I put the seat back down. Cody, you know what Riley sounds like, don't you? <laughs> oh, Somewhere, maybe somewhere. not. Um, Jesus. There he is. There it is. <laughs> but Dune. Um, you mentioned working with Dune. That one we can talk about here. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's about... I, I know nothing. All I know is, like, the, the part I'm playing, and then right. I'm getting ready to go do it, but I'll tell you guys, please, holy please. shit. Like, yeah. who, have you read the book? Are you familiar with the book? Yeah, you guys like I mean, the book? The book more so, more so than the, the Lynch version uh, didn't uh, didn't really love. Okay. Um, but, but this is apparently going to be very different. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's his own. It's it's a whole new thing. So yeah. it has nothing to do with any previous film, right. you know, incarnation. Although I, I mean, when I was younger, I will say like I had a lot, I had a lot of fun watching, you know, the 1984 version of, yeah. of Dune. Um, but it's 
like great, like a book like Dune, not to put too fine a point on it, but it's like saying like, well, of course there's going to be multiple Hamlets. Of course there's going to be multiple. I mean, it's, it's yeah. a piece of, 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 of great literature, in my opinion. Yes, it's science fiction, right. you know, whatever. That book itself, just Dune, the original Frank Herbert Dune, is is a is really a piece of um, of great literature. I mean, every character is so well uh, crafted, every plot point, every angle. I I feel like my best way of describing Dune, the the book, is that every character, every plot point, every moment. Herbert wrote at from so many different points of view, kind of philosophically, emotionally, psychologically, that you as the audience, it's are like, you're really forming strong opinions because there isn't like the really good guy, the really bad woman, right. and they're just gonna fight it out over this thing. It's really complex. And so then to take that and adapt it into the film version, which deals with all these relevant themes to 2019 right mm -hmm. now, I think, uh, the state of governments and what's happening with the environment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This, I, I read the script when Denis called and said, you know, uh, that he wanted me to be a part of his film. It's a great phone call to get. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when your WhatsApp is ringing from Budapest, and this yeah. is a true story, I thought it was, I, my, I have a, I, I'm dear friends with Denis, yeah. but it's not like we, we don't talk on the phone. You know, it's not like that. Um, he's just, he's a very busy guy too. Like, uh, he's, he's, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know why he's been so kind to me, but but his um, illustr guy who uh, who helps create um, so much of the vision, like Denis, will communicate what he's seeing, and then this really talented artist named Sam Hudecki will do a lot of this the concept art and the sketches and stuff. So Sam and I talk much more, and I knew that they were in Budapest working, and I got this this WhatsApp call from Budapest, and I just assumed it's Sam, so I answered like a jackass. You're like, Sam, Sam, I was doing some weird thing, you know, and it was really quiet. And then I hear this voice like, David, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's not Sam. That's Denny. Hey, 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 hi. <laughs> yes. Hello. And he, uh, yeah, he said, I would like for you to read the script. And I, and I, I believe you'd, you know, be great for this role. And, um, I knew the role before I read the script and what right. he was doing is with it. it. So what's Peter DeVries, okay. who is the mentat of the Harkonnen house. Okay. Uh, so. For everyone who's familiar with the book or um, the previous film, you know, Baron Harkonnen is is ruling Arrakis. Yeah. And then here come the Leto family and they're going to be taking over. And this is transfer of power that's happening. But, um, uh, you know, Baron Harkonnen, who in this version is going to be played um, by the incredible Stellan Skarsgård. Uh, so good. He has a... A mentat. Mentats in this future are like human computers. They are evolved to a point of being able to process information and do things that just regular humans can't. And Piter, who I'm playing, is the mentat who who works uh, underneath. You're the, the Baron. Watson, but yeah. way yeah. <laughs> more yeah. Yeah, villainous. Yeah, villainous. So, well, yeah. and he's caught. And it, it, I, I don't want to say conscienceless because I haven't fully formed my all my opinions about the character. But boy, is he like. Uh, he is, he's, yeah. he's, 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 but he's, uh, he, he, like the, the fascination him, in the book that he has with like, say getting information out of somebody and the way in which he would go about that is, um, it's intense yeah. and scary. And so the, the, the film script that I read is so it honors and it brings to life that book in such a beautiful way. I've never read anything like it. Well, I'm yes. very excited for that movie. I'm uh, very excited here, guys. Once again, the movie is All Creatures here below. David Dasmanshin, May 17th in theaters and digital. Can't wait for Dune. Can't wait for All Creatures here below to hit this for these people to see it. And any other movies you might be doing. Who knows, and, and who you knows? guys? What else? Who knows? Who knows? So this, this, this is not the last time we're going to Oh, I want to come back in soon because there's something yes, we're going to announce at uh, Comic-Con that there's nothing to do with anything that you guys think that you think that I can't talk about. And I can't wait to talk about well, it. Good. So. Uh, something that, we're going to announce at Comic-Con? You're going to leave us be, with that? The, the we. I'm right. gonna, me, that I'm going to be, <laughs> hey, everybody. Well, we're, we're gonna, the doors are open for you. Thanks. And you come back. You will be you will be a regular here. We'd love to have you. Guys, thank you again for joining us here on Collider Live. For David Osmolch and myself, Roxy Stryer, Josh McCuga, Mark Riley, Cody, Alex, the whole damn crew, we will see you tomorrow, Collider Live.